Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the ESL ESCA Dubai Invitational. I'm here with Jason Catlin. Jason, how are you doing? This matchup is going to be incredible, I reckon. It's going to be insane. I mean, the fact that we did just see it less than a week ago for Fragbite Masters, seeing a 4-1 win for Fnatic. I think TSM have a bone to pick with them here and maybe have uh, you know dissected what went wrong in those maps and hopefully come into this one and pick up a victory for them. Yeah, and a best of one game as well. And yeah. starting on Dust 2, it could probably go either way. I mean, Moses saying probably TSM. I said TSM. Yeah, Sam, that's mostly because it was a Danish thing. Not much analysis really behind that one. And then, uh, you know, Vendetta siding with Fnatic, who are the major championship winners. So maybe not such a bad pick after all. I think, I think we could at least expect this to go, you know, into like plus, plus 20 ish round. I hope um, so. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to see that. The thing is, it's hard to ever bet against Fnatic. You know, the only team to win three majors, the only team to win two back to back, the only team yeah. that has so many superstars on their team. TSM, you can't ever count them out, though. I mean, they have a strong lineup. They have the potential with the double out with Device and Cajun B. Though I have to say, looking at, you know, the results from that best of five that they had, Cajun B really was lackluster, finishing a 0.73 rating, really kind of sinking his team. He needs to really step up, and he can be that strong offer, especially on a map like Dust 2, if he can sit towards Car, get comfortable on that CT side. And I've spoken with Pronax in the past, and he says, I don't understand why, but every time we run into Cajun B, he seems to just wreck us completely. So Fnatic have a certain measure of respect for this player. Uh, so maybe that's a really good point to just you know, bring that up. We actually, I, Fnatic expect Cajun to be playing well, and we should too. So um, I, I, especially on a map like Dust2, we, we have to see him go really big on this one. The thing is, it's a little bit tricky about TSM as well. Like, you can look at them kind of like Fnatic in terms of anyone can really step up. But yeah. I feel like one person on the team has a really tough time carrying it. I remember thinking back to Kerrigan on Mirage, I think it was during the Pro League Finals, and he was single-handedly carrying it, dropping like 30 kills over the course of the game, yeah. when the second closest person was at like 18. They can have those moments, but I feel like they're more of a team that rely on more than one person to really step up, to pick up a victory, to you know really facilitate that win. I mean, before Cajun and Kerrigan started playing a lot better than they, than they, than they currently do, when they were sort of you know, not quite the, the potential stars of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of a team here. I think, I feel like the device and Dupree rifle combination was actually very strong on Dust 2. It's quite a while ago, all the way back in Dignitas at this point, but um, this is one of the maps where you really saw how much they could do, and uh, I'm kind of hoping to see that again. They, they have a really good duo going on there as well. It will be a tough game for them. Yeah, and I'm actually looking uh, forward to the Fnatic side as well. Olaf Meister just doesn't ever seem to play bad. I um, heard them talking about the analysis test, talking about Flusher, who's really been He's always been like a yeah. second place behind Olaf Meister. He's never really played bad. He's always really stepped up, but he hasn't been as flashy as Olaf maybe has in the past. Um, and then you have Crims, who as well was doing phenomenal in the actual grand finals of ESL 1 Cologne 2015 at the Major. So again, a, a team of superstars that can really step up. They've, they walked over Titan earlier on today. They're up against TSM. They're, they're rival now, I guess I'll say it as. Yeah. And on a map like Dust2, if we see that double up presence out of Fnatic, if Olaf Meister and JW both secure it, that's going to be a deadly combo to really beat. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if TSM can do that. So maybe some of it is going to come down to just controlling the economy, making sure that Fnatic, whatever side they're on, they won't be able to afford too many sniper rifles. And try and see if you can uh, maybe learn a little bit from, from the last matchup. Mm -hmm. So am I, am I hearing you side with Fnatic as well? Are you slightly on that side? I mean, if you had to make a choice here. It's always a safe pick. So I think I easily have to say Fnatic on that one. And I'm, I'm assuming you're with TSM. I have to, don't <laughs> I? I mean, All they're right. going to meet me backstage at some point. So. Can't stay hiding forever. I think we're about to go at least into the knife round here between Fnatic and TSM. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Not just out on Twitch, but of course, mostly here at the venue. You guys have been incredible already. And I look forward to this game. I don't know. I mean, knife round on this particular map, I don't think it has the biggest impact. No, but no. Um, well, it's always nice to get to choose first, isn't it? Yeah, I would agree. It's not like the biggest loss if you don't win the knife round. But you know, choose that side to start off with can always be a good thing. Uh, I would feel like, though, most teams want to choose that CT side, but the Pronax last man alive looks like TSM won't really give him the opportunity. He picks up the second, but he can't get the last. And here we go. TSM picking up the knife round, and they'll get to choose their side. They're actually taking their time, it looks like. Yeah, I, I feel like lately TSM have had a lot better T sides than they have CT sides. Um, so maybe they want to get that good start. Seems like they are going to pick the terrorist side. The CT sides weirdly have not been looking very impressive. And, you know, that used to be a traditional strength of not just this team, but a bunch of Danish teams. That seems to be like, you know, almost like the Danish thing to just be good on CT side. Kerrigan changed that for TSM, made sure they were also good on, on terrorist side, but now they've sort of forgotten the, the basic stuff there. So I'm hoping that they won't make uh, too many mistakes CT side. I think this T side though is going to be strong for them, and they've got 
the uh, the buys coming out already here, Jason. They don't have the Ray Boss, actually. Kerrigan, he's sitting with the Tech-9, but he didn't swap it over to a man with armor, not trying to go for that really powerful, strong one-man on your team. But we're also seeing a very early three-man stack out of Fnatic towards this long A, where TSM already rushing through. Yeah, and this is going to be a bit of a problem. Nice shot, though, from Cajun, actually. Dupree and Device will pick up a kill each, and Cajun finally following up. There's his piece of the pie, taking down Flusher, and it's Olaf Meister and Crims left in a... Very tough 2v5 here. Grenade timed by Crims, not going to kill anybody. And Olaf Meister up on Catwalk, a little bit worried that he's being best stabbed in the back. Not quite yet. Crims, he's thinking about taking that jump, but not quite doing it yet. Good shot there. And Crims can't see anybody. He's just shot in the back as well, and Dupree will take him out. Olaf Meister going to go down a great start here for TSM. Device and Dupree with a double kill each. Hey, look at that round start too. TSM just rushed straight in towards Long A. It was a three-man stack waiting. They didn't even flash. They have the confidence they could win just down the aim duels. And from that, they get control of Long A. They save the smoke that they bought up onto Kerrigan, threw it on the cross, and got themselves into the A site. A fantastic round out of TSM to pick up the pistol. And that shot from the Vice actually goes through. Fnatic, maybe no big surprise, going to be picking up a couple of pistols here, including armor, except for on Pronax who is uh, just relaxing for the moment here. But TSM not wasting too much time trying to make an entrance into B, and they are going to be successful. They still have the bomb and T-spawn, though, so they're not really committing too much. They really don't want to walk into a stack anywhere and give up the bomb, and it looks like they've avoided that much as well. Device playing close here, pistol out. He's actually going to go down to JW. Sort of an expensive round coming out here, and the bomb, though, will escape. He picks himself up a second kill. JW and Pronex both pushing through Catwalk as quick as they can. And looks like they're going to be able to just try to save these guns and take it into the next round. But uh, TSM, again, is a good read by not, not, you know, pushing the bump aggressively, not getting caught up by the stack like you were saying, and not losing that control to make sure to secure that second round. Not necessarily as clean as they wanted to, but they get it nonetheless. I think maybe TSM were expecting slightly that Fnatic would actually have a scout of their own, and that's why, you know, if you think you're going to be playing against that scout, the last thing you want to do is take too many fights long or mid, but mm -hmm. running into B is like perhaps the least likely spot for the scout to be in. You check it out. If there's no scout, you go for it. Um, they did open it up. I mean, I think they lost a little bit more than they would. If Fnatic do come up with both these guns, though, that's going to be pretty big for them. And I really hope JW doesn't give too much away here, because saving that scout for the next round would be big. Well, what gets me about what TSM did that round is they sent two men over towards B. The other three, they had one man in long A and two men towards middle, with one watching towards long. Um, so if those two men pushing in towards B died, that would have been a lot of guns out of their hands and could have been very deadly for TSM. But I feel like they just had a lot of comments behind the two men to push in to be careful about that and to take the fight they know they could win. Yeah, that would have been a big risk. I, I guess the logic would have been that if they, if they saw a stack on there and they died to a five-man stack, then they could have, the rest could have pushed A and maybe yeah. hoped to still win the 5v3. But it is a risk, and it um, seems like you kind of have to do that on Dust 2. Even the anti-eco, it's a little bit tricky sometimes. Olofmeister, right in the middle here with the UMP, going to be sneaking out behind Carrigan. Flashes rain in and Flusher going down. All of us there to get the refrag on Carrigan. So right now they're just trading evenly, but they've lost the bomb site here, and that should mean TSM are going to win it. It's very hard for the retake here on the Fnatic side. Pronax going down. That one kill for Olof. If he can get one more, that could mean a really early AWP for them with armor as well. It's six hundred dollars per kill for that UMP. JW fighting a little bit with the scout, doing some good damage. I might actually be able to kill Dupree here. Well, he might be able to pull it off. It, it very well could. I mean, JW sitting in a perfect position to spot them crossing back towards middle, but not taking the shots just yet, and he will get taken down. A good shot from Olaf. There's the second kill. Can he get a third one? Hasn't really reloaded yet. That bomb is about to go up, and Olaf, is he going to sacrifice it? He picks up. Oh, wait, what? There it is. I thought for just a second <laughs> that that AK was getting blown out of, uh, out of his hands, but not quite. That's still, what, 1200 bucks for him and an AK. So it's a lot of money saved up for himself in the early off. It looks like it won't be coming out uh, for the side of Fnatic. He's not going to be able to go in for the challenge anywhere just yet. And we see Device still sitting on the scout. So he's looking to be, uh, was he looking for an early pick over towards B? Is there a four-man push in that direction? Yeah, they are putting a lot of people on long ones. You're right, TSM in upper down, just rushing straight through. No time wasted. And Krim sees at the doorway here, but he's going to need a lot of backup. They need to make this rotation in. And smart play here from the Danish team. Smoking off this device, taking down Krims. And Olaf Burns alive, trying to get out. And the Molotov of Carrigan will drop him, and they kind of have to save already. This is the B-bomb site, Jason. You, you can't just retake it, can you? Well, not 3v5, not easily at all. Um, you see JW setting up for some exit kills, but I, I really wonder why Fnatic... You had Crimson all off there outside of B. They gave up the bomb site once the flashes came through. They realized, all right, we can't do anything about it now. But then Crims goes in, 
After the smoke's been laid down with the flash in from off my she gets caught off and completely destroyed before the rest of the team can even rotate in. So I'm really wondering why he went for that really aggressive early play into the site instead of going for the five-man potential retake. I mean, it's such a hard judgment call, and Fnatic, they, they tend to be sort of a very risky team in that sense. Maybe not quite mm. as risky as Envy, but they do sometimes make the individual decisions I mean, to just try and go for it. You look at it as if he pulled that off, it would have been an amazing play to Crims. If he doesn't yeah. pull it off, it's like a, a little bit of a questionable play. But I mean, they can kind of afford it at this rate. They still have potential of their best three to come up if they want to get through into the semifinals. But they're down 0-4 up against TSM. Yeah, so very decent start, I would say, for the Danish team. But as I was sort of alluding to, I do expect them to get by far the majority of the rounds here on their T side. In fact, I might even go as far as to say, if they get 10 rounds, if this finishes 10-5 in Furious TSM, I actually still think Fnatic have a decent chance of winning this game. Not like a huge chance, well, but they, they're still in it. Think of the uh, the Grand Finals of yeah. one Cologne. They got up against Envious, they were able to pull it back. Yeah. And they got absolutely smashed in that first half. So anything is possible for Fnatic, definitely. Yeah, but I think it might be even worse for TSM just because their CT side is just a little bit, a little bit strange these days. But they do have that AWP on JW, and that's something that we were told from the analyst desk as well to watch out for. And you've been saying it as well, Jason. It's, it is a factor in a game like this. Looks like they're going to try and see if they could push up. Although Carrigan was smoked off for a moment. Dupree's making his way out middle. It's going to be a B split, and this is a big problem. Crim's going to try and go aggressive. He's got the M4 in hand, and he drops the bomb on device. That's a huge kill, but Carrigan is there to get the refrag. Crim's has gone down, and all of he's not even going to be unflashed before it's all over. He's dead before he could see a single thing, and Carrigan now controls in the middle and once again Fnatic have to make a run they can't keep fighting although they get that kill no, they're still so far away they got to stop that was great distraction by Kerrigan because he went up towards catwalk threw a couple of flashes and just to pull JW out from that middle position to be looking towards catwalk and from that they're able to smoke it up and rotate straight in towards B I mean I think Olaf Meister was sitting over towards car in the B site and towards closet and Crims are just sitting in the doorway so if anyone did end up pushing through tunnel I feel like Crims could have got picked off on the backside but it didn't matter they won the aim duels and now they're gonna be at 5-0 against Fnatic a little part of me wishes that more people would do what Titan and what Existence was doing for a while on this bomb side. Is once you realize this B split is coming, the person who's playing door, which in this case was Crims, mm -hmm. would just go back and try and push up a dark. And if you've got a teammate with you, you just both push up a dark. At most, you should be running into two players. So, and if they don't expect it, if you flash in and run in at them, if you win the fight against one or two people there, then yeah, you lose the B bomb side and maybe they get the bomb right. down, but you're still in a much better position. Um, I kind of I kind of prefer that sort of reactive style than mm. just trying to defend inside the bomb site. Because honestly, Crims was in a very tough spot and where Olaf was, there was no way for him to actually help. No, I agree. I, I really love that that opportunity that you can go for that push in towards the uh, upper B tunnels and catch him off guard. But here we go, TSM again into the sixth round up 5-0. And JW was able to save the AWP from the last round and Device able to pick one up for himself. But JW hasn't been too effective in middle, and it's not because of him, it's because Team Solar Mid hasn't let him be effective just yet. They're constantly flashing him out, constantly smoking him off, and constantly forcing him to rotate in different directions so he can't get comfortable. And look at this, Kerrigan, he's dropped in towards CT spawn. He's going to stay sitting in the smoke. Is this real life? Well, it's going to be a good start anyway for Fnatic. It's Pronax. Trades two for one over at Long. Flush has gone down, but very good start. About 50 seconds left here as Cajun goes down. It will be a lot to Carrigan and Device, and it's a good shot from Device. Dropping JW, Olaf Meister's gonna fall, and it's down to a 2v2. This is a great cut back into this round here for TSM. Still got 35 seconds, but they are also boxed in between long and short. Molotov is gonna buy some time here. Pronax can't make the crossing easily, and Crims is right behind on Catwalk, walking up, making some noise. Device, he heard that. He's in the smoke behind him. This is a disaster. Device gonna come back out, and he finds Crims, and now it's a 1v1. Pronax, no Molotov. Oh, no smoke he can't actually get rid of device he just has to try and stick it and even worse device has the molotov walks out and he takes that shot that's a triple kill and tsm they're gonna be up six and oh what a start jason that should not be a round that Fnatic should have lost either because they had pronax pushed up long in pit locking that down completely and what did device do with the bomb at long he rotates back towards middle goes up catwalk picks up a kill on olaf meister open up that catwalk position to push through and crims wasn't getting aggressive enough quickly to stop from actually getting the bomb in towards site a great hold by tsm but that was a chance Fnatic should have had to be able to pick up a round finally. Yeah, absolutely. Though a smart boost up here. JW with the M4 quickly on catwalk, going to be taking down Carrigan. And that's that's what I like to see. That shows you that Fnatic are a little bit tired of TSM controlling the pace of the game. And now they just want to take a little bit back. So smart move, I think, from the Swedish team. And the fact that Device had that Molotov left also put so much pressure on Pronax. Yeah, yeah. He must have seen that coming out and just thought, what is going on? Dupree to take down JW, and we're right back in a 4v4.
Well, you do have Flush and Pronax to actually watch off towards long game, which will allow Flush to rotate back in towards Catwalk, at least to watch from that car position. But the rest of TSM, they're not in a hurry. They have a minute left. There's no need to just hit on towards the A side ASAP. You can drag out the time, get a little bit more information, maybe pull a couple of members Fnatic away from one of these sites because they're completely split. Two men towards B, two men towards A. It's full middle control for TSM, but they want to hit this A site. Oh, Device exposing himself just a little bit here. He's up in Galda Gandalf playing along, but not going to get caught just yet. Two people long and two people in CT spawn means Fnatic are going for a full retake, but here's the problem. There's two Molotovs left on TSM and there's not a single smoke left on Fnatic. This is going to be a very rough retake. If these two Molotovs get put into play, one's just been used, but Sipnix is holding on to the other ones. You guys are going to have to count in your heads. That Molotov could be what ends this round for Fnatic. Now they're going to try and go for it. Bomb ticking away. Olof flashed for a moment. Fnatic, they need this round. They're 6-0. Oh. Device to pick up a kill here. Fnatic, they're not making it work right now. They're taking way too long time and there's Dupree taking down all of Crims to fall. Pronax, last man left. That Molotov is still in the hands of Sipnix, and that in itself is crazy as Dupree gets a quad kill, takes down Fnatic 7 0. And I think there's a bit of a pause here. The Carrigan disconnecting, but I do want people to notice how long that Molotov was hold on, held on to by Sipnix. That's, a, that's really, really keen play from him, just mm -hmm. single handedly saving it because it's not that easy. It's a great job by the rest of his team to just drag out the round as long as possible as well. And you look at Fnatic and how they attack that A site on the retake, you know, with two people towards long. And then I think it was two people coming up from CT spawn to hit the site. They didn't go for that catwalk push to try to catch them off to pincer them in, you know, to get an actual attempt on that site. They just try to throw all their eggs in one basket and hope they can get a couple of nice kills. I mean, I, I really kind of wonder what do you hope to accomplish by pushing that direction? Because you, you don't have the height advantage. You don't have the peaker advantage in that situation. It's very difficult to do. I mean, you need to get the timing right between the people coming CT spawn and long. But the mm -hmm. fact is, if they had gone short instead or catwalk, they, those Molotovs, instead of preventing the defuse, they could have been used to just block off catwalk. True. So in so many ways, saving those Molotovs until after the bomb plant is huge on the, on the TSM team. Seven and oh, Jason, and we're down to C set 75s and a, some deal grenade going on here. And looking at the last result these two teams had against each other on Dust2, it was 16-10 at Frag by Masters, the showdown qualifier. So, you know, it's very possible that Fnatic can come back. And like you said before, you wouldn't be surprised if Fnatic can pull it back after losing 10 rounds on that CT side up against Team Solo Minute. But they need to get something going soon. TSM have built up a lot of momentum in this so far, and they're more than happy to split across the map, as you can see. But Ulfmeister, he's behind them in tunnel. Oh, this would be big. If nobody on Fnatic had died yet, this would be such a huge play. But now he's been discovered as well, and they are going to double team him. So a little bit sad he got caught from T-Spawn then. Otherwise, that could have been a really good flank. And JW playing a dangerous game against Sipnix and coming out on top. And that C-Set 75 of his is still no joke. Yeah, but it's him up against four people. And he's just trying to rescue that gun. But you can imagine TSM with all the money in the world to work with, they're not going to let him go for that. And there we go. The final kill coming through. 8-0 to zero here, Anders. Team still in mid. They definitely came out to play today. And they're looking com uh, confident. They're looking comfortable as well, which is really important. Okay, double up setup. Everyone has been saying this. Olof Meister and JW. How many rounds do you think they're going to get off of this, Jason? We're going to see them take like a really good five, six round streak here. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, very strong offers for their team, especially if you yeah. get them in the right positions. Olaf Meister now going to be the one watching middle, which is typically what we see when they have that double up set up with JW over towards long. But again, it seems like all the control out of TSM has been stemmed from this middle position, but Crims gets caught with his knife out. He might get overrun. Oh no, he's inside the bomb set. He will actually get the first kill there, but they're just too close and he can't get a chance to reload. And he goes down to the pre now covering the cross right until the smoke goes up. It's all of my stand. No entrance here either. And still look at this. Well, more, more Molotov just used, but they have another smoke and a Molotov on Sipnix. They've got so much utility here. TSM, the bomb goes down, but they can buy another maybe 20 seconds or something like that from one of these entrances. What are they going to have to do? I think it's going to have to be Pronax. He has to win this first fight. If he wins it, they can retake. If not, I think it's going to be all over. And there's all of my stuff with a good kill on device. Pronax coming from upper, walking right in, and he wins the fight against Cajun. Another kill on Sipnix, and it's all down to Dupree in a corner. He's in a 1v4. He tries to get the kill, but it's not going to happen. He goes down, and they'll find that bomb. A first round for Fnatic. One and eight, and a great round for them there. That round was all won by Olaf Meister getting that kill into device on back plot. If he didn't shut him down, Pronax would have been completely blocked off and unable to push him through tunnel. But because he goes down, Pronax has that threat, that pressure coming in from the backside, which forces Team Silliman to look in so many different directions, to hold so many other angles. So finally, Fnatic on the back of the double up buy up have finally picked up a round. But like we were saying, how many rounds can they get from this? Can they make it more than just one? 
they're going to need to. I mean, obviously, if they lose now, we could be looking at a 14-1 type situation because then they just won't have yep. any economy. Good start here as Olaf picks up one, <laughs> a second one. They're trying to get close, but he's still firing. He will go down to the pre, so two for one trade. But now Fnatic pushing aggressively on Catwalk. They're right behind TSM, and that's the bomb down as well. Not going to be picked up by anybody. Cajun alone, and the best he could do now, and this is an important job, he has to do a lot of economic damage. Fnatic, they can't come out of the round like this with four members alive. Yeah, I'm not sure he's much, how much he's really going to be able to accomplish off this as well when they just flash themselves through, but that was a great road type by Pronax and JW as well to come in towards middle after Wolfmeister picks up two quick kills to really cut them off from the split in towards that B side. So great job by Fnatic. They finally pick up two in a row, but can they continue this pace? They're going to need to. I mean, again, it's, it's not like the hardest thing to come back for a team like Fnatic against Team Solomid with this kind of scoreline, but any rounds you can keep away from Team Solomid at this rate can get you into the semifinals oh, tomorrow. Oh, look at Device. Him and Dupree, and that's that combination that we were talking about earlier on Dust2. There's something going on between those two players. Very important early frag there on Olaf, who started off the last round. Crims playing close to the box to say, can hand there right around the corner. Dupree going to go down, and Cajun now just hanging out for a moment. They haven't committed to this, but a Carrigan goes down as well. It's now into a 3v4. Flashbang out from Crims. He gets caught. Cajun going on the one kill, and still a 3v3. More than a minute left, and Fnatic now with the advantage. They're sneaking up on Catwalk, though, and... I'm not sure Fnatic have any real way of knowing that this is going on. They might only realize when the bomb goes down here. Sibnix controlling middle. And if Device can get the bomb and Sibnix still has middle, that'd be huge. Flashbang on in, and he's going to make it around the corner. Fnatic, they realize that something is up, but they're still not quite sure where. JW oh, wow. knows it, and Sibnix will go down. So now Device, this would be something close to a godlike clutch if he could do it. 1v3 versus Fnatic, bomb only just down. And he just used the only smoke that he has. They've got two Molotovs to try and get back in here. I mean, Device has been playing well already, but this is uh, a little bit too much to ask. He's going to have to move any second. His position's going to be on fire. He has to move out. He gets a kill and goes down. And it's a solid retake there. Fnatic playing it well. I love the way JW played that round too, because after he got the kill in middle, what he did was he sat towards CG spawn even after the bomb was planted, maybe expecting in the last minute to rotate towards long A since he got the bomb down to try to get a favorable position. So he's just covering off all the angles. He knew exactly where he's going to be, tucked it on site, and a great Molotov just gave away his position. It completely cut him off. They get the nice one for one trade, and Fnatic get a third round on the board. Three straight now for them, and Team Solo mid, they're out of money. In spite of winning eight rounds in a row, they only have to lose three and, uh, well, they could buy this round, but after this, you're right, they don't have anything else to show for it. And they're going to go very aggressive on long, but they run into just a complete bombardment over there. Grenades and Molotovs, and they lose two players. All off in the middle. Good flick there onto Carrigan and what looks like a sublime start here for the Swedish team. We were sort of toying with the idea where they were going to run into a really mean street. Well, this is going to be a fourth round in a row for Fnatic. And then next time, TSM, especially if they don't get the bomb down here, they won't be able to buy anything at all. And there's a good chance we could see a five-round streak for Fnatic out of nowhere. I wouldn't be surprised either. With only two people live on TSM up against the five. And with Fnatic playing this one very smart as well. And with Device not able to connect the shots like that, it should mean Fnatic pick up their fourth, but... Team Solo Mid, they seem to have lost control of the, of the game. You know, Fnatic, they had some misreads. TSM had, had them read like a book perfectly when they went for the initial push towards B uh, with, a, with a, the, a double up set up on the side of Fnatic, completely reading into that, even though they lost on the retake. But now since that point, they've been struggling to get a, a, a solid read of where Fnatic are playing or how they want to attack the next route. You know, the, Olafmeister has been holding middle. He's been holding back towards B doors. Crims has been sitting tucked in on site once Olafmeister gets him through in there. And JW and Pronax and Crims have been going for that three-man, or sorry, not Crims, going for that three-man push over towards on to lock down that early control. And Olaf actually trying to hide that AWP in spawn. What is going on here, Olaf? Making sure they can't easily get to it. And they only have pistols and armor tech. Nine couple of eagles here on the TSM side, so they shouldn't be able to get too much out of round like this, but... You never really know. And JW even sees it coming in a sport that SMG, he wants to farm up a little bit of money for what, what little is rest of this, left of this first half here. And TSM, first the casualty is theirs as Dupree goes down. JW in the middle, fighting, but not really connecting just yet. Out of bullets, and that Tech Nine gonna do the trick. That's a bit of a touchdown grenade as Device goes down, and all of Meister fighting takes down Cajun as well. So just Sipnix and Carrigan left in there against four players from Fnatic, and Crims is up here, not gonna let go of the EP bomb site so easily. Takes one more with him. It will be a bomb plan at least, which will help their economy a little bit. 
Yeah, so maybe get a little extra money on the side coming into the next round. But there's still 1v3 Kerrigan. It's going to be a godsend for him to hold on to this. And he will get taken down. So Fnet will pick up their fifth round in a row now. Um, wow. Very impressive. A triple kill from Olaf Meister. Five and eight. You can definitely see that. Fnatic, they just, they don't, they don't break easily. They can bend quite a bit, you know, once you're down, eight and oh, you've got to be feeling a little bit frustrated, but then they just bounce right back. And like I said earlier, five rounds, that might be all they need. I, I'll call this a game now. Okay. Well, let's see. It looks like TSM able to buy up the op yet again for device. And he hasn't been really too effective since the double up step has been coming into fruition for Fnatic. And this is something that's been so deadly for teams. And they're able to pick up that double up setup. And you see JW again getting early control in middle with the help of Pronax trying to lock down towards lower. But Debris has brought it out and Fnatic are just trying to strangle TSM for this control of the map. Playing just a little bit more aggressively here. One close to middle and two on Catwalk. They're going to be flashing out under Catwalk. Device looking for that peak, not quite getting it yet. A lot of counter flashes coming out here and Fnatic not giving it up so easily. Let's try and make sure that TSM don't get that catwalk control. And there are a lot of executes you can pull once you have that, amongst other things we saw Kerrigan make the jump down CT spawn earlier. So they want to make sure that TSM don't have too many cards in their hands to play around with. In the meantime, the rest of the Danish team make their way out on cross long, while Fnatic just holding on in middle for the moment. Pronax here in a bit of a dangerous position. They're going to flash their way through. Pronax, he can't see a thing, and he's going to get taken out. Sipnix falls as well. And now the game is on, but look at the clock here. Only 33 seconds left as they make their one to the A-bomb site. And it's going to be yet one more retake here for Fnatic. And right now, I think TSM need to win these last two rounds. They've got to make this 10-5. Otherwise, they're going to be mentally a little bit broken. Cajun in a great position. Instant headshot on Crims. Can there be more? All of his gone. And Cajun, he's going to get all three shuts down Fnatic. Wow, that's so unexpected. I mean, that's something you can't really predict, but KGB we played that perfectly just to sit tucked in so neat and tight and waiting for his moment to shine. Now it's all on JW and a one on three with the bomb already taken away. And there's not much he can do to stop this, but Fnatic going for basically the five man hold middle, giving up wow. that control of long A completely to TSM for one of the first times since the pistol round. And they got punished for it. And finally TSM able to get another round on the board. Quad kill for Cajun B. We did talk about it. You talked about it in his last performance against Fnatic during Frag by Masters. Yep. He was a bit invisible. And um, now he's definitely turning up. That was a really great quad kill. That's going to put us into the 15th round, the last of the half. And Cajun taking a fight at long. Going to hit the leg shot there on Flusher and has to immediately fall back with Jade. What? He wants this madness. He's picking what? up behind the lines. He's going to get the kill on Sipnix and runs away. And that has to shake TSM. They have to be shaking their heads and thinking the only person in this whole game who would have done that was JW. Why would you ever think anyone would run through the fire to chase you along with an AWP? JW, this man's on a whole nother level. I never would have expected in a thousand years. And it might have just ended the round as well. Yeah, we even have X-Ray. And even with that, it's hard to really believe that just happened. <laughs> That means they're now two men up. They're still going aggressive, and that's a really, I think, a big mistake for Fnatic. I have no idea why they wanted to push being up two men. Now, this Molotov is going to come in and land on the bomb side itself. No one there just yet, but look how low JW and Flusher is. This could switch on a dime for Fnatic if they lose just one person. Almost JW's gone, but Pronax is there. Some very, very good baiting going on, and Pronax is going to capitalize on that kill. That means there's only one person defending B, and that's Crims. Well, they also had Flush coming from the back side, so they definitely know they're going towards the B side. Crim's going to be all alone in a one on two. Let's see if he can just hold out, if anything. He's behind the box here, going to look for the opening, not just catching it yet, but look at this 20 seconds left. Dupree gets a headshot on one and flushes right behind them. And they don't know it yet. Bomb being put down by Cajun, and it's a free kill there on Dupree. Had his knife out, and Cajun alone in a 1v3 with a. AWP in the back line takes down JW next in line. They oh. line up. Oh, that's so close. But Flusher is just barely going to survive. Triple kill for him. Good half being called. 9 6 finish in favor of TSM, yes. But considering the 8 and 0 scoreline we started off with, this is not exactly. Can't feel too good for TSM either. Yeah, not at all. I mean, again, like you said, it's not a bad score, but against a team like Fnatic, you got to hope to maybe pick up a little bit more, maybe be stronger on your CT side. And I think it was Vendetta talking about it earlier on on the desk, saying that back when Fetish was on the team, they were a lot stronger on the CT side, but with Kerrigan coming in, they were able to be a lot stronger on the T side. So I wonder if they're going to be able to hit that kind of balance anytime in the near future. 
I think they've already hit the balance once, but then it sort of slipped away from them again, and it's very hard to guess at exactly why that happens, but it does every once in a while. Just about five seconds left here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're joining, it's pretty much uh, a good time for it here. A bit of a legendary matchup. Uh, Fnatic and TSM, second half coming up. Best of one game on Dust 2 for the ESL ESCA Invitational here in Dubai. It's already been amazing. We still have a bunch of people here, and I've heard tomorrow is going to be even more crazy. Yeah. A pistol round going into it here. Armor on everyone on TSM side, except for Sipnix, who's been relegated to HE and the Diffuse Kit. Oh, looks like oh. we did have a little bit of a crash there, so looks like we're going to be starting that pistol round there. But like we're saying, 9-6 for, for uh, TSM. Not yeah. a bad start, but I think the pistol round is really going to determine how this game's going to go. You know, if you've imagined TSM picking this up on the CT side, they could potentially go up to 12-6 scoreline. And then it's just kind of a couple more rounds so you can pick up that victory. Remember, the winner of this game will be getting through into the semifinal play tomorrow. So we yeah. won't have to play again in a best of three earlier on in the morning. And that's something that, honestly, each team really wants. But I'm not sure if this is actually fully live or not, but it well. looks like it's not. As uh, TS oh yeah, as Fnatic are just still sitting in spawn. So let's say we're still waiting for that restart to come through. Yeah, just making sure that everything is going to be working out just fine. Oh. What do you what do you see on a fanatic here? I mean, now they're playing on the terrorist side. Is there like a is there a pistol around here on the terrorist side? You think they could go for? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I think it depends on maybe their attitude. I, I feel like fanatic just depend on what how they feel that day. Like I don't think they have anything set in stone. I was you know, looking back at demos not too long ago and looking at their overpass kind of play and looking at their uh, cash and they had a couple of like similar like basic strats, but they always stemmed in different directions on how they felt the game was going, how they you know uh, read information early on in the round. I feel like if Fnatic, they want to be aggressive though, and they could go for the same thing that TSM did to them, go for that quick push out towards long, trust in Olaf Meister with the Tech 9 if he has a good spawn for it, open up that long A position, that smoke off cross, and get in towards that A site. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to be gained from controlling long on the terrorist side, and the reason we don't see people do it so much anymore is because, actually out of all teams, like the team, I guess, that doesn't isn't responsible so much innovation these days, actually NIP started throwing this tactic where they would throw two AT grenades and a Molotov into Longhouse every mm. round. As soon as they had money on the CT side, that would just be the standard setup. And that meant if you're trying to go for it, you you even if you run in there with the orb and you try and take a peek, there's a chance you'll die yep. anyway because of the double grenade and Molotov, you might just burn alive. So people just kind of, if they want long control, they take it much later. But a pistol round, you're right, that's maybe the one round where you could do it just because they're not obviously going to have double grenade and Molotov in a pistol. So. Yeah. You might be able to say, and it's kind of short range for the Glock as well. I'm, I'm kind of liking that idea. And there's also, I mean, there, there's so many potentials, uh, you know, potential strategies to run on this map. You know, you could always think about the three, two split pistol round and towards the B side. You know you could overrun them when they only have 12 bullets to fire at you, as long as you can maybe blind them up or just catch them in a perfect timing. It usually comes down to, in my mind, not necessarily how the T's are playing, but how the CTs react to how you're playing in the pistol round to be able to pull it off. It's a very reactive play on the CT side pistol round too. May pick that one up. I mean, you can force some things like what? Boosting two people up catwalk, pushing up middle early on to catch them off guard and towards lower or towards the top of middle. But typically, if you go over something like that, it's very risky. And if you lose those two men, well, you can pretty much kiss the pistol around goodbye, which has always been such a crucial factor when it comes to a lot of these games, the pistol round. If you can't pick them up, then you don't really have a, a high chance to actually win the game. I think from a from a CT point of view, Dust2 is maybe the most forgiving map to play a pistol round on because I mean, if you think about a map like you mentioned Cash or maybe Inferno, mm. if you're playing the CT side pistol on that one, you've got two, three clicks with the USPS before they're so close that you, you yeah. can't do it anymore. And you've got to hit a headshot on one of those two, three. That will at least give your team a chance. If you hit another one, then you know, you, you're setting yourself up for a win. Mm -hmm. On Dust, there's a lot more of a chance that you, could, you can snipe away for a while, especially in middle, especially on long. I mean, if you don't lose anyone long and just fall back to a bomb site, then you can snipe away for a while where the USPS is going to be better than the Glock anyway. So I feel like CT side here, the USPS is a little bit more, you know, it's better almost than it is on a map like Inferno or Cash, where you, got, you get one chance maybe two and then then it's then the Glock yeah. train is going to run you over. I could definitely see that and you know I, I don't know about you personally but in my opinion I really like the the CT hold of Dust2 on CT side for pistol route is just to send three men towards long get that full control of pit and play for that full retake towards the A side I mean that's just like you'll typically see teams maybe like to hit 
when it comes down to the pistol round. But then, of course, you have to think about the B site as well can be very open uh, depending on the rounds you take, depending on what, in, or what uh, equipment you want to take with you as well. I mean, investing into armor versus investing into nades is always a tricky thing to do on that T side. Yeah, and you were pointing out when TSM was playing just now, you said they don't have the raid boss spill. Maybe for anyone who doesn't know what, you, what you're talking yeah, about yeah. in that sense, just try and explain to, uh, to any newcomers what, what does that mean. So it's typically when you buy armor up yourself and then someone uh, drops you a tech nine to so become this like super powerful level one pistol round kind of guy um, that you can just run through and not really get aim punched too much and hopefully able to take someone down. But then it kind of makes it a little bit light on the other person when they can only typically have a smoke to back that up with. So they play more of a utility role and mm. let someone like Olaf Meister, or I think it was, I want to say Kerrigan in that one, um, yeah. to be that raid boss for your team. Yeah, they definitely are very good at that. And I think Fnatic sort of proved uh, during, during at least one tournament just how, how powerful that can be. <laughs> Um, I remember, because I, the thing is, I put that setup on screen. I remember yeah. it was like 34 kills with the Tech 9 and 35 with the AK 47. It was ridiculous go. out of that, man. Yeah, I remember you were showing me those stats. That was incredible. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do have a slight technical issue, but luckily it's right at the half change, so it hasn't really affected the game too much. I guess that's good news. What we will do is we'll go to a quick break, and then we'll be back, obviously, once everything is sorted out. So stay with us. It's uh, TSM and Fnatic second half coming up right after this break.
Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well. We always have that moment when there's a little bit of a gremlin in the system, and I know people at home are sitting there going, what's going on? What's actually happening right now? In this moment, I've begged and pleaded with the great production crew we have here in Dubai and said, let me go out and have a chat. But not with just anybody, with a man who I never get to talk to, because normally you're over there and I'm over here, we never get to talk to each other. Yeah. Alex, how are you doing, mate? I don't think people realize that we actually communicate one to one another outside of the stream. We actually talk occasionally, Sean. Okay, occasionally, all the time. All the time, best of friends. No, but it's good to be able to actually be talking to you on stream. This is great. This is great. I feel like you should have had a mic, though, because I'm going to have a hard time doing the interview to yeah. you. But just so you guys know, we are experiencing a little bit of a technical difficulty. I know it's called a VAC problem. I'm not really keyed in on what it is. You could probably glaze a little bit over it. I'm sure anyone watching knows the VAC authentication error basically just means that whenever that happens, we have to change the PC to try in order to cut down the delay. So that takes time. I think, of course, the players then, if once time's gone on, they might want to warm up. and just So basically, it's something that we can kind of, there's absolutely no way to avoid. It's just about that quick turnaround, which we're hopefully going to be coming to an end very, very soon. I see players starting to move their mice, so that's positive. That's a good start. But let's just, let's gloss over that. Let's talk about... We're in Dubai. I, I mean, I feel like this is a pretty special place. I've talked about it before. You know, we've got literally a skyline along there that you know puts most city skylines to the test, if not bests them. Over there, we've got some yachts, boats, all kind of good stuff that, in my wildest dreams, somebody would invite me onto. So if you're watching at home and you happen to own one of them, you know, shout out. How are you enjoying the the Dubai experience? I'm having a lot of fun, primarily because this is the first event I've ever worn flip-flops for. Uh, this is a whole new world of, of foot freedom that I'm currently experiencing right now. So, I mean, that's a good point. I'm, I'm not going to lie, exploring the old town as well as the new town, like, there is a ski slope in the mall. So we're walking around shopping, and then all of a sudden there's penguins and there's people snowboarding and skiing. So that was something that I can quite honestly say I've never experienced before. So that was good. And all, the, all around, just lovely weather, the fact that it's... Well, however, what time is it? I don't know what time it is anymore. It's definitely late. I feel like we're coming on to midnight now. Somebody can probably tell us. And it's still, I'd probably say, 38, 37 degrees, which I'm sorry for our American brethren. I can't jump there. But it's very hot in any case. I'm, I'd it's like to be Apparently less. 12. It's 12 midnight. Oh. Good stuff. Now, Dubai is an interesting place because it, it's de definitely a, a central uh, spot. But being here for something like Counter-Strike, seeing so many people that are like enthused by it. What does that do to you? I mean, you, you've, you've been around, you've, you've seen a lot of tournaments, you've seen this kind of, the fans. What's it like to see the fans here? I think this is a real statement that Counter-Strike or rather eSports is becoming like a global. I mean, it is worldwide now. eSports is everywhere. And the fact that you've got kids here, we, like quite literally kids, who just how, like idolize these players, follow the game in and out through Twitch and online, and then they just come here and they get to meet them. Like this is something that I didn't think, or probably they didn't ex expect. Like they get to meet their favorite players. It's something that I love and I would love to be able to do it to absolutely everywhere, like completely worldwide. That'd be so cool. It is one of those unique things that esports is still at that level that people can just go, hey, I'm going to go down and take a photo. I mean, I saw earlier the guys from, I think it was Cloud9, walking yeah. through here and just getting mobbed, but just taking the time to literally sit and, hey, I'm going to take, you know, probably 100, 150 photos with people. I mean, for you, like, is there anything like that that you could, you've ever experienced before? I just think, yeah. I mean, no, let's be honest. The point I want to make is that, like, these guys, however long ago, were just people who like to play video games and they just sit in their you know, bedrooms and be like, okay, I guess I'll play some more video games. I love this. Mom, this is serious. There's like $100 on the line. This is really important. I'll have dinner later, that kind of thing. And now they come to a country like Dubai. They fly for like 30 something ridiculous hours from America. They do these, all these crazy layovers. They touch down and immediately they can't go to the shops without being recognized. Like these guys have become celebrities. And I think that's something that you don't always see online. You don't see that on the streams. But when you actually are at the events, you realize that these guys have like, these have an impact on these guys who just walk around Dubai. Like it's just this crazy thing that they're becoming celebrities, real celebrities. And I mean, you talked about Jordan. Jordan nothing basically was like, there's a lot of guys chanting my name. I'll go down. And then he was swarmed for like 20 minutes. And he was doing signatures. And he, I, I spoke to him backstage. He was like, yeah, so I just sat around for about 20 minutes just to kind of catch my breath after that signing session. Like, it, it's, it, he puts a lot into it, and all the players do, and it's just, I don't know. It's hard to believe, really. But I also think I'm not even going any further. I've heard the game is ready, which is really good news. I said that in my ear. I can see the guys down here. They're ready. Yeah, guys. 
they're still awake and we love that. I'm gonna go ahead and we're probably gonna take two minutes, three minutes just to set things up here. Of course, let you get back to your desk and the okay. cast get back to their side. They only do something. If you're watching at home and you wanna get involved in esports, you can, of course, at any time by heading over to eslgaming.com. But if you wanna actually see some esports live, and you happen to be on the West Coast, then you have no excuse but to head over to San Jose, where IEM is coming in a very short couple of weeks, and you'll be able to see Counter-Strike and League of Legends. You'll be there, I'll be there, hang out with us. Don't wanna hang out with us. I'm pretty sure there'll be some great teams there. Any last words before I send you back over to your, uh, your kingdom? I just think we should chat more, Sean. This is great, I've had a great time. I've had a great time too. Guys, we're gonna take a short break. Just cut away, don't go anywhere. Good things are on the way. See you in a second. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're finally ready with the second half here between TSM and Fnatic. Legendary matchup. Really great start just to recap here. TSM taking a stunning eight rounds in a row, but the half finishing 9-6. Jason, now that we've had a bit of a break, I mean, Fnatic, do you think they're going to be ready to take heads here? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, come on. It's just a short break for them. Of course, they're going to be ready to get into this. They're the three-time major winners. Um, they finally, as you said, went down eight rounds on that CT side, but once they got that double up set up, they took five straight and able to pull it back 9-6. So very well done by them. I feel like a pause like this isn't going to be something that's going to phase a team as good as Fnatic. And the same goes for TSM, a very strong team. But now we're going on to the, a little bit of a tougher side for TSM, as we were talking about before we had that little bit of a break, is that they've yeah. been seeming to be a lot weaker on CT than versus T side for them. They do, and I mean, it, it definitely isn't easy. Fnatic is all, they're, they're such a strong team. They find a lot of openings, and they have, I mean, pretty much everyone on the team capable of getting those openings. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not like there's, it's easy to point out when you've killed, like, the Fnatic entry fragger, and then, you know, now we can relax a bit. They're, they're all so good that it's, uh, it can always happen anyway. Um, and there's some coordination that has to go on on TSM. I feel like they should be good enough between them. They should have enough experience, maybe especially playing against Fnatic, to be able to read what the tendencies are where Fnatic want to play. Uh, but they don't always seem to do it. And that's something they, they've got to correct. And it has to kind of be right now. I feel like I'm trying to you know, break down the, the T versus CT side of my head and, and kind of how the pace of the game goes, right? You think on the T side, you have more of a control of the pace. You're the one that decides what happens, yeah. when it happens, where you're going kind of such. Um, if you get that taken away from you, if the CT side pick up that pace, you seem to really struggle. Then when you're on the CT side, you're the team that's playing reactive, unless you want to be really aggressive on the CT side, which has plenty of downfalls as it has upsides to it. And I feel like when they're on the T or CT side, I think maybe they get their heads a little bit. Maybe they kind of overthink some things and they want to get aggressive when maybe they shouldn't. And patience is something that seems to maybe sometimes be lacking in the TSM camp when it comes to playing out a CT side. They've got a bit of a buffer, but not a big one. I mean, if Fnatic win this pistol, then we're probably going to bounce back to 9-9, nine, nine, and that whole buffer is gone, and every round is really going to weigh heavy on on TSM. And speaking of that uh, CT side aggression, I mean, Fnatic showed us a couple of times where it worked. JW had one yep. really aggressive push, you know, early in the got boosted up on Catwalk. Uh, it worked. He got the kill and ran back again. Um, so I think you're right. That That is one way for the CT side to control the pace a bit more. Uh, I'd like to see that from TSM. It's funny that you mentioned JW, too, because you can't ever really predict what this man is going to do. And if you think about the one round towards the end of the game, when there was a Molotov thrown long A, and what did he do? Decides to run through it with the op, pick up a kill, and back away. Like, you cannot predict stuff like that. And when you have a team that you can't really predict and kind of feel out exactly how they're going to play, that's when things get really dangerous. Uh, you know, I feel like Fnatic... Yeah. I want to say it's never really been a team that plays no respect, but they obviously have the, the, uh, the opportunity to if they want. And beating TSM 4-1 just prior to the Friday Night Masters Showdown qualifier, where they're now already qualified through into the Grand Finals, I think they really showed 4-1 scoreline. They're not a team to be taken lightly. But TSM, they've always struggled with Fnatic in the past. They finally you know, have been able to beat them as well. But coming to this, you don't want to drop down into the elimination match or the decider match tomorrow. You want to be able to go through into the semifinals already into the next day. I feel like the terrible thing for TSM about that loss at, uh, at the Fragbite land, where you're right, they did lose 4-1 uh, yeah. essentially in a best of five game, is that they didn't get to meet them in, in, the, in the major tournament. I think a lot of people were like, well, TSM, they're like the Fnatic killers. Maybe if they had met them, maybe mm. in the finals, it could, have, it could have been not Fnatic winning. And then they kind of show up on land. I mean, obviously not the same setting as a major tournament, but still, you know, just in case anyone was wondering, was TSM going to be the, the team to stop Fnatic at the major? you got to think maybe not. I mean, maybe Fnatic just couldn't be stopped at that tournament. Cause... I think no teams really have the ability to beat Fnatic consistently. Like, there's teams who's been able to beat Fnatic. There's quite a few teams that has been able to beat them in best of one or best of three. But to consistently do that is so difficult against one of the top teams or the top team in the world. 
Yeah, and it, it goes goes down to a lot of things. I mean, coaches in this game is, is one thing that's, that's never been like clearly defined, exactly what you're doing. And it, it's also because mm -hmm. I think it differs from team to team. Right. But Fnatic, I think they don't just have like a coach. They also have a couple of people who, you know, check demos and sort of feedback into to Vugo's mind. And he talks to Pronax and then the whole team talks. And they've got like a really solid structure build up around the team itself. Um, I mean, I had a chance to speak to, to Vugo a little bit last time around and he He's super hardworking as well. Um, it's I don't know. It always sounds a bit weird when you say that like the, the coach is also a huge part of it because it sounds like it's something you're just kind of making up. But um, right, right. And we and it's also hard for us to test. But but speaking to Vugo and speaking to the team, you can tell that they they would be in a different place. I think without him, definitely. Um, it it would be harder. It takes. It's so hard work. And here's the problem. Not every player who's a top player, I mean, we rightly so, we talk about all of us being, you know, the best, the best player in the world. Sometimes Crims is, is really close by up there and Flush, you know, best player at the major tournament, all that stuff. But not all of those people, you can just give them a job of saying, hey, let's watch a couple of demos and you guys point out what you think could work for our next game. Some of those players will just shrug and say, well, no, that's not my job. I'm the best mm -hmm. player, you know, someone else do it. Um, so you need, you need other people to help you out. Well, that goes into the whole next level of the synergy of a team. You know, you can have the best aimers are all on the same team, you have the best caller, and they still won't be an amazing team because it comes down to, again, like you're saying, how player A wants to prepare. You think yeah. about how Fnatic got ready for the major. Do they put in you know, an insane amount of hard work, watching demos every day, practicing for 12 hours a day? Well, no, they did it. They, they had some fun. They're playing FPL quite a bit. Um, they're relaxing and just keeping a calm mind coming to the major. And that goes to the question, you know, Vugo, I bet he's doing a hell of a lot of work yeah. in the background, give them information so they can keep that cool, calm, collected mindset come into the, you know, one of the biggest tournaments and one of the four biggest tournaments of the whole year. Yeah, and, and he wasn't, I don't think he was complaining about it, but, what, but one frustration that he was expressing uh, to me in that context was, well, the problem is you do all this research and maybe like, one or two percent of what you're doing yep. makes it into the game and actually is valuable, you know, but then you do all this other research, all this other stuff, and you don't even really get a chance to use it. So it's really hard work. Um, and I think in the future, for teams to identify people who have the stamina to sort of keep going and looking through these demos and finding the weak spots, finding just, it's also just a question of finding patterns in what a team is doing, your yeah, own yeah. team or the enemy team. And usually that will be like a, a pattern will be something, you know, subconscious that a team as a whole is doing that they don't realize. And it can be really mm -hmm. simple things like, you know, every time there's 50 seconds you know, left on the clock, they'll throw a particular smoke. Whenever that goes down, like that time and smoke combination, that's a signal that they'll do one specific thing. And maybe the other team don't even know that they're doing it. But if you can see that that's happening, then you've got a huge lead uh, over somebody else. And I think having people employed uh, to do that is is a decent uh, investment. And that's the upside and downside of what you're saying. You know, the fact that you can put in, say, 20 hours of work, and maybe like five minutes of your work yeah. actually gets used. But the thing is, that five minutes of work you just did might give your team a key round, you know? It's the yeah. same thing as a commentator. You do all this work preparing stats, you know, preparing for the actual event, and only a portion of what you actually prepare for gets used. But the fact that you do use it, and it, when it comes out, it can be flawless. It can turn the tide of a game. It can, you know, change things around completely. And like you're saying, you know, having someone yeah. that can that have the mental fortitude to do that and realize that most of the work you do won't really get appreciated and won't really get put out there. Yeah. But the little percent that you do uh, that you do that gets used can make your team a good team into a, a great team. And yeah, and I mean, we talked about this whole thing with Nip and, and Natsu, obviously. Um, it also, as we can tell, comes a little bit down to how receptive is the team, like what's yeah. the chemistry yeah, like yeah, between yeah. the team and the coach and everything else. Because uh, undoubtedly, Natsu has got a, an incredible amount of experience. So it kind of been that that was the problem. Uh, but you need you need you need everything working together essentially. We are still waiting to get the server on the way. I'm pretty sure everybody's on here, so that's not the issue, guys. But we're just making sure that uh, they, that all the configs are working and that there are no uh, no issues with uh, with starting the game. It is the second half that's coming up. In case you are just joining us and wondering what's going on here, it's a best of one game on Dust Two between Fnatic and TSM, and um, the winner they get to go straight into the semifinals. The loser has to play an additional match tomorrow should also be best of three. So you're really much on time, and I think we also have got another game after this one with Titan playing, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, it should be still a, still a fun evening here. Yeah, Titan and, uh, and RV, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, should be a good match. Navi kind of got uh, smacked around a little bit earlier in the day, so I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this new Titan lineup. They seem to be, uh, they seem to be interesting.
Yeah, I think it was a 16-10 scoreline for TSM, an overpass. Yeah. Which uh, is a strong team, actually, for uh, for both teams, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it should be. Um, but we've seen, actually, surprisingly, a lot of Dust 2 so far today as well. I think we've seen it now. This is our third or second time. And I really want to get this game underway. I really want to see how... We were talking about the pistol round. We were talking about the double up setups. We've been talking about, you know, how uh, you know, the individual players can really open up sites and start to get these games going. But... It's going to come down to the victor of this. You want to be that team that moves on to the end of the semifinal. You don't have to wake up extra early tomorrow to play another best of three to have a second chance of getting through. Because there's a lot of money on the line. I mean, this is the biggest prize pool <laughs> distribution per team out of any yeah. event. 100,000 first place, 60,000 for second. That's a lot of money on the yeah, line. Prize pool to team distribution yeah. is, uh, is, is a ratio is, is quite high up there. You're right. Only eight teams playing in this tournament. They are eight of the strongest teams in the world. I can think of a couple of others I would have really have liked to have been here. Uh, but, you know, you've got to set the limit at some point. I still think Mouse Sports is a hilarious team to watch, and I, oh. I want to see them more and more, basically. But, uh, With Nico now on the roster, taking Spitty's spot. Like, that, yeah. that man, we saw him at uh, Intel Extreme Masters uh, Gamescom, just has ridiculous kill potential in any situation. Yeah, Nico. Oh, yeah, Nico. And then the fact that he's only, like, I guess 17, 18. He's so young. He's got a, a crazy career ahead of him. Well, on the good note of that, we do have the Pro League Ooh. starting up in just a few weeks' time, and it looks like we're finally about to get underway here, Anders. I can't believe it's finally happening, Jason. Let's get it on, ladies and gentlemen. It's the second half coming up here. It's between TSM and Fnatic. Thank you for your patience, and of course, we are sorry about the delay. A bit of a failed smoke there. That wasn't supposed to go onto the box from Fnatic's point of view, and now instead, Device can actually look over that headshot box and see what's going on, and Carrigan really... <laughs> This actually got nerfed because TSM did it for a while, had Kerrigan sitting in that fire there. But they're going to try and do it anyway. The fire is less prevalent, but it's still there. And he's waiting with the USPS in hand. They're peeking out. They see him, and they're going to gun him down. Instant takedown. Cajun all the way up in the A-bomb site, doing a little bit of damage, but not quite enough. And now they've got to be very careful here. Great start for the Fnatic team. But even then, they slow it down, they take it easy, and TSM gonna go aggressive, pushing up middle, they get shut down, Dupree is gone, Device is gone, and it's up to Sipix and Cajun. Fnatic playing this one so slowly and carefully, and it's paying off every step of the way. This is just a tactical defeat almost from TSM. They've got nothing they could do anymore here. 1v5 for Sipnix, and he's surely gonna go down. Yeah, there's no real way you could be able to pull this off in a one on five. And patience is such a key thing, as you saw for Fnatic there. They pick up the early kill to carry again, and what do they do? They don't rush the A site. They take a second, they sit back, and wait for TSM to go for the rotate, to over rotate a little bit early. And they catch him off guard with the two men push up towards middle. And you, know, you really got to kind of question sometimes that position Kerrigan was holding. It's such a hit or miss spot. If you hit those shots, then you're, you know, you're a god. But if you miss those, you're dead. You don't really have a good angle and backup towards barrels, and you're left alone to just give your team a deficit in players. Yeah, and you can't get out of there either. I mean, you, you have to commit to it and just sit still. Now, they've got two people in this B-bomb side. It's JW's going to open up with a one and a double kill. Nicely done here from the Swedish player. Picking up two kills, spraying through even as the smoke is going up and keeps on fighting here. Third kill is Kerrigan going down and those are all AK shots, so at least he's not making too much money off of it, but still a pretty good round from him so far. And it's going to be the end of the round. Triple kill and one health left on JW. The confidence as Fnatic as well. They sent only three men towards the B site, and they had two men sitting, one towards T-spawn, one towards long A, realizing that we should be able to take this site and have no problem whatsoever. So now they're one round away from tying things up. And it looks like TSM going to be going for the save yet again, with just a couple of P250s, a nade. I believe that's a flash being picked up for Kerrigan, so... Not really hoping to accomplish too much, but if they could take a couple of guns away, maybe get two, three kills in potentially, it can make it a little bit expensive for Fnatic. And you've got to notice this style as well. No armor, no scout being picked up for the longest time. That was such a popular idea on this map. They did not get uh, pretty much any kills in the pistol, not so many in the follow-up rounds. So it's not like they have a lot of money TSM to throw around with. But, you know, if this was Envy play, you know that MBK would have been <laughs> trying to pick up that scout at some point just to see if he could make it work. Good shot there from Sipnix. He's running back down pit and still lands a headshot on Crims. And now Cajun trying to do the same, but there are so many people. He actually gets that shot and kills Pronax. A lot of damage being done this time around. And now they're sneaking their way up back on Catwalk right around. Some good shots being put through, but not a kill yet. Carrigan in the step over, but not going to happen. It's just device left and he's going to go down. Flusher with the double. And that's going to be 9-9. Nine nine. They equalize the score and now TSM they got to put a stop to this, because we all know what happens when Fnatic reaches this level. We very well do. We've seen it so many times in the past, and Zipnix, with that kill he got towards Long, he got the uh, Galil out of Crimson's hands. 
And with that gun alone, he might have been able to do a little bit more damage, but JW played that one so slow, got a perfect flank onto him when he wasn't looking. And that just pretty much finished off that entire round. But look at this, getting try to get really aggressive over towards long. But like we talked about this before, like the double nades, the molotovs, if you want to challenge early on, well, that's what's going to happen to you. Pronax is down to five health, and that's going to happen every time as long as the enemy team has the economy. And you know sure as hell TSM want to invest into that. Yeah, absolutely. But in the middle, Sipnik's actually going to get traded on. He was in a really awkward spot. The fact that he even got that kill is pretty well done on his part, because there was a chance he would have died straight away. Pronax is low, Flush is low, Crims is low. This should be around for TSM. It's not 100%, but they really should be able to pull this one through, though. Olof is going to give up that scout and pick up an AK instead. Dupree, he's got very little health, but this push into Upper Dark is gonna give them such a lot of information. I'm expecting to see devices right on the edge. He really wants to move out as well because Dupree is telling him, step by step, there is no one on this side of the map. And there's device changing it up. Very good information, good tactical teamwork coming out here from the Danish team. And Fnatic don't know it, but they've been found out and they're being wrapped around Every second that passes here, it's going more in favor of TSM. Good shot there. It's going to be Device picking up into pre with a kill as well. It's all down to Flusher coming out long. Cajun going to miss him for a moment, and he actually goes down. It's still a 1v2 with 25 seconds. And if there's one person you don't want to fight like this, it's Flusher. He's got a Molotov as well, but only 20 seconds. He might not be able to do it if they just hold on here. And it seems like he's not quite going to go for it. There's almost no time to make this work, so... Might be better to just try and save the orb and see if you can make it work next round. Yeah, they're playing this so smart too. Two men stuck towards Kawak where the bomb was already near them. I think he's just going to try to save it, but will they let him? Do they know exactly where he is? It looks like they're going to be running straight into his crosshair. Yeah, out on long flusher. Really wants to do this. and He's going to get the shot on Carrigan. Yeah, getting the absolute most out of the round. Wonderful play. Also top fragging at 16 kills. 18, I think, though, on Dupree. So on his own team only. That's going to be 10-9. A very important round for TSM. And I love the way that TSM utilized Dupree there, too, because they only had three health or five health. So what do they do with them? Push them through tunnels. It's a win-win situation. You get that early information, and you help prevent them from getting the aggressive rotates on you. And again, getting very aggressive towards long, where Kerrigan's the only man waiting. And they take that early control. TSM, without saving enough guns through the last, uh, last round, they can't have the utility they need to lock off long A every time. Well, that's a good point, Jason. That's exactly what just happened. You're right. They, they know they killed so many players from TSM. They weren't going to have the double grenade and Molotov combination. Mm -hmm. So they just push out and take control of it. I love that. Smart play from Fnatic. Dupree and Device both down to half health or less. If they lose this round, then Fnatic are probably going to take the round lead. They're also pushing up as a group over at long with just a single person covering at the uh, upper dark, because that's what they kind of lost to last round. They don't want to have it happen right, again. Right. Cajun controlling Catwalk with a bit of a teammate there, but they're so close. They're all right there, and Flusher with a headshot. Sipnix has to run away. They might as well save, but even that's not going to be easy. <laughs> and there's already a man waiting. Olaf Meister looking to pick up a couple of these kills. Sipnix is going to rotate in towards the middle to go towards that B side. So I think Olaf Meister is hearing them running around where the rest of Fnatic can rotate to help out. And they get these guns out of their hands. They're going to have not only a tight scoreline, but not a lot of economy, not a lot of money to use. And then next round for TSM. Yeah, this is not quite the knockout blow for Fnatic if they get these guns away, but it's sort of the jab that sets up for the knockout. It's going to be very close, and TSM are going to be dazed and confused a couple of rounds after this one. Olaf, low on health, but JW also showing up here. Every kill that happens on TSM here is going to be... Devastating for the Danish side. Dupree gets a frag and <laughs> device pushing out here. UMP to pick up a double. That's a lot of money and steals an AK. That's actually just a huge play at the end of the round. That's going to tie the score at 10-10. It's a 1,200 bucks. The free AK as well. So maybe he can buy up something for a teammate there. Looks like KGB just sitting on the, uh, the pistol for now. So they're going to slightly invest into this round. Just the three people are able to save the guns from last. And the rest of them are just going to be sitting on... A couple of pistols. I'm surprised they didn't invest a couple of pistol armors into this to make sure they can pick up this round or at least have an opportunity, but Fnatic are just walking completely over them at that B site. Important kill from Device, but I still don't think they can easily go for it. And once again, Fnatic already have a guy set up for any kind of uh, save potential here. Pronax out on long, taking a fight with Device and winning it as well. So they, they can't even save the rifles easily. Fnatic keep having that one guy lurking about. It's going to be up to Sipnix and Cajun, try and see if they can find Pronax and kill him, and then try and save these guns, but TSM, they even made the decision almost instantaneously to try and save. No luck there for Cajun, trying to get down into pit. He's going to get caught off mid-air, which is going to leave Sipnix. This, this is just a very thorough Fnatic team. 
They're not giving an inch at all. Sivnik's going to get found as well. He gets the first kill in and then grenades to follow up. JW, he lands that shot. He goes down anyway. Great headshot from Sivnik's. It looks like he will be able to save this. Can he even get the... No, oh. he can't. What a shame. Well, one thing that we're really seeing at Fnatic as well is they're being very quick with their play. Like, you look towards long, they've been challenging out as many times as they possibly can, even with Pronex getting knocked down to 5 HP. Again, they've hit B very often, very quickly. And from that, they're forcing TSM to go back to this point to use a lot of early grenades, flashes, smokes, whatever it may be, to hold Fnatic back from rushing and being aggressive. Then, once, once TSM finally wins a round off the back of that, Fnatic can play slow because you know TSM are going to continue to commit that much utility over and over again. And look at that, JW just taking full Kawa control. Oh, he actually gets down by Cajun's Deagle, but you're right, there was more aggression, more speed coming into a device in the middle, drops the bomb on Olaf Meister and that AWP. Great aggressive play with just a couple of pistols here, and if they win this round, TSM, Fnatic will also know that that's a huge giveaway and one that they just shouldn't have made here. Very aggressive, but this time it gets punished. Cajun had the edge with the Deagle looking for another shot on Pronax, and they've got to be careful here. They need to group up Fnatic and hit a bomb site hard and fast and see if they can't at least get the bomb down because that's definitely a sure way of winning this round for the Swedes. Instead of trying to take long aim battles here, they don't really have the manpower to do that anymore. They're going to get softened up, I think, a bit too much before it really goes down there. Sivnik's in the pit, goes down eventually, and Pronax and Crims open up long, but still, Kerrigan is up here with that P250 in hand, and they are getting very close. This is one shot range. If they get just a little bit further, there's the kill. Pronax going down, and Carrigan with a double. It's all on Crims, and he's got four health device. One jump shot here with the C-set. He's going to do it. He's ready and waiting, and right at the edge, he's going to go down. Now it's Dupree's turn. He's got the AK, no armor, no grenades. Bomb is going down, and Crims, one hit, and he's going to be gone. Puts out the grenade, and he goes down. There's almost no chance there, and TSM win a very tough round. And that's a huge, huge win for them. Yeah, Kerrigan picking up two big kills there as they were pushing it towards the ace side. And the thing was, TSM, they got those early kills, yeah, but the problem was they didn't get the guns off the back of that, and yet they were still able to hold on to that just with Kerrigan alone inside the site with a great closeout by Dupree. But that ties things up yet again here between these two teams. And Team Sullivan, they're not out just yet. They recover the utmost most importantly, and this is going to spell a little bit of trouble for Fnatic. They're not going to be, you know, too shy on money just yet. The imagine if they lose this round without getting a bomb plant, they're going to be hurting into the next, where TSM could potentially take a two-round lead. 23rd round coming up. JW, in not aggressive initially, but going for sort of a late peak in case anyone was in there looking. So some mind games coming out. There's the Molotov-Grenade combination that we keep highlighting, and mm -hmm. this time Pronax is not going to test it. And they also went for the early smoke over towards B as well. So really trying to limit the aggression that Fnatic has just been hammering time and time again across these rounds. But Pronox looking for a little bit of a cheeky peek towards Long. There's three men there as well. So they're looking to push in straight into this. And there's Kerrigan picking up the first. And nearly gets the second one as well. That's Flusher surviving on 22. Cajun going to get the shot. And the call must have been made. They must know how low Flusher is because Kerrigan will already put that through. Sipnik's going to go for a quick fight here. If they get long control, then whatever push is happening on short, it won't be very effective. Even if they get in and get the bomb down, TSM should be able to retake here. 4v3, yes, but considering Flush's health, you got to be a little bit worried for Fnatic here. This is a very close game at the late stage. As you can tell, neither team wants to easily give it up. The device is in a great position here in the middle. You can hear a lot. If Fnatic make too much noise, they'll know. And it's such a big round for Fnatic, too. You don't want to lose this round and go into a save off the back of that. Now, Crims is trying to distract over towards the site from Catwalk. While in the meantime, Olaf and Flush are pushing through, and Crims picks up a big cone of device. Now it's Dupree in a one on three potentially as they push in towards the site against him. He's got to get at least one kill here. Device should have been able to do a lot more. I think if this round falls, it might be down to him, but there's Dupree picking up the first on Flusher, jumping over the box. He sees another player, and now backup's being called for 14 seconds left. And Olaf Meister is going to be able to put the bomb down here. It's a 1v2. If they win this, it's basically stealing it away. This was a 2v4 into a 1v2. The bomb is down on Olaf. He's got that dreaded AWP. Now, they do have a smoke, a Molotov, and a flashbang as well here at TSM. So they've got to be able to set this up as best as they can. There's the first flash in. Olaf trapped in the corner. He's going to go for the first shot. He misses. They know where he is. Misses another one, and they're going to be too close. Cajun triple kill to take him out. And that's going to be 12 to 10. Jason, these rounds are gut-wrenching. You can see how close that was, too, at the end, because TSM, they didn't push in together. They pushed in a little bit staggered, so they could not potentially line up for a double shot out of Olaf to clutch the round. So well done by them. And now going to this round, Fnatic, they have no money to spend. TSM could go up 13-11. And I really have to wonder, 
Fnatic sent three men out towards long. Yeah. And the other two, I think it was Olaf Meister and I want to say Crims, were just kind of sitting in the middle. They weren't being aggressive towards Catwalk just yet. Seems like they want to get that early control at long and then transition into some control towards Catwalk. But there we go, KGB picking up two already. Yeah, really good stuff here. No armor, just pistols. And Device walks into a point blank shot from JW. That's got to be frustrating. And you can tell JW wants that AWP. He's trying to see if he can get in here and pick it up. And he does. And then goes down. Cajun, quad kill. And there it is. 13 to 11. TSM now just three rounds away from taking this map away on Dust 2. But that definitely doesn't mean it's over yet. Yeah, it would be a big win for them too. I mean, their ego got hit a little bit going down 4-1 against Fnatic yeah. for the frag fight showdown. So... And if you want to pick us up, not to mention get through into the semifinals so they can play later on tomorrow and guarantee themselves a little hell of a lot more money than they would already get. But look at Solf Meister going for the quick pick towards long. He's going to get taken down by Cajun B. Where was the nades? They didn't even need to use them. No, just Cajun sitting on the corner, and that's the one orb they had invested into, a big investment, and absolutely no return on it. Carrigan in the middle, they're sneaking through. He gets the first one, sprays down Crims as well, and Flusher finally with the reply, but it might have been too late here. Pronax and Flusher, the last two people left. It's a 2v4 here. They've got infinite amounts of time on Fnatic's side, but they are boxed in. Sort of a square of doom going on as Pronax will take down Device. It breaks open part of the hold. Now Fnatic have got a series of pretty difficult decisions to make here. And Dupree is actually <laughs> on the T side of B tunnels on upper. He could potentially get flanked if we do see Pronax or Flusher go that direction, but Pronax is looking to push towards Cabal with only five health yet. Again, Flusher has the bomb. He's actually out towards Long, and now he's in a one on three. Maybe trying to pick up that op out of Olaf Meister and use it. But with 40 seconds to go, he's going to stick with the AK and look to potentially get a bomb down. The way Flush is running here, you can tell he's just like in clutch mode. He just wants to see if he can do this quick, quicker than TSM can react. And he's already got the one kill. Oh. Gets the second one on Sipnix. And did he spot Dupree? I think he might have. And look at this. He's got a smoke and a Molotov left. If he does this, well, it'll be a classic Flusher. He is such a clutch player. And now he's hiding inside this side. He's not sure where Dupree is coming from. Hasn't seen him jump yet either. Now he spots his face. So the Molotov is a bit wasted, but he's still playing around that smoke. Going to end up jumping down Dupree. Did he hear it? He's looking for it, but he's not quite sure. The bomb is not that far ticked. Flusher walking up behind him. He's got the triple. He's going to go for the quad spray. He gets a headshot, and there it is. He clutches it and brings Fnatic right back in the game. What a play. You can tell as soon as he was running out long, he just had his mind focused on the task ahead. 22 kills. As you said, he was in clutch mode there running up towards long. I mean, I, I really wonder why they challenged out like that. They challenged out from catwalk when they didn't have the other man in position to get the refrag, so they end up losing that man. That turns into a one-on-one, -on -one, which was a situation you necessarily didn't need to have. So I want to say it's a little bit of a misplay to TSM, but then again, Flusher, that was phenomenal play to that guy. I think you're absolutely right. It was a misplay by TSM, and we should definitely point that out, and, and we should sort of, you know, deduct a couple of points on their account for that. Now, the thing, the thing that Flusher did, and he did well, is when he get, once he gets the first kill, he has time to slow down if he wants to and right. try and see if he can get another battle but what he actually does he just runs and i think that the fact that he pushed the timing that much meant that it was very hard for well not very hard but it was harder for tsm to sort of slow it down because they had almost no time to make a secondary call and obviously that call would have had to been stop fighting fall back mm -hmm. wait you know play 2v1 instead they only had a couple of seconds and then he was at the corner along so he, he forced the reaction on them yeah. in a short amount of time and that and quick reactions like that can cause mistakes and I think that's exactly what we just saw. If you're playing a 3v1 like that and you get the other team a chance to slow down, then they can, they will have a lot more time to communicate and use the fact that they are just a, another, you know, man or two against you. Um, so, I mean, Flush is just, I, that was like an intuitive level play from him as well, but it's very cool. Okay. So what we've got going on here, ladies and gentlemen, is a tactical pause, which uh, each team is allowed to take once per map. Um, and a nice timing, I think, to, uh, to take it here, just to make sure that... Uh, you get your mind in the right place. We're so close to the end now, Jason, that any mistake can cost you the game. And this is like the, the infamous fanatic pause. I think it was yeah. a Demon talking earlier on about how he's you know, chatting with Pronax, saying they don't really talk in this pause. They just give them some time to collect their thoughts, figure out what they need to do, and then from there, they just push through. And I remember you've, you've asked for like a stat of how many times Fnatic has paused yeah. and how many times they've won the round after. And I, I, I have to say it's over 75% at this rate because they seem to yeah. always win that next round. And I wonder if Vigo's saying much behind them about this. I think there must be, there must be a little bit of communication, but um, maybe it is just a way to cool it down as well and, and get your, your head back in the game. And I, I mean, I don't think you, I think some teams can benefit from going over a, a lot, and especially when you've been playing this many rounds on one map, you've got a, a, a decent sample size to think about what, 
what has already worked, and if you can come up with like three rounds where you could say, well, you know, that one beat push we keep doing, it kind of works, let's try mm -hmm. it again. Um, but just a mental reset is important as well. So we can go over, I guess, what they're t maybe we're talking about is that if we look at how this game has gone, right? What has Fnatic won the rounds off the back of? Quick aggressive play towards B, towards Long, yeah. and even towards Catwalk. The problem is that because TSM has been able to win a couple of rounds back to back now, they've got the utility to stop that from happening. They can early nade towards Long, early smoke off B tunnels, so you're forced to run straight through something that can cause yeah. a big problem for you. So Fnatic, what do you do to counter that? What do you do to work around that? And what's something we haven't seen too much is that mid to B push. Yeah. The whole 2-3 split, wait behind that smoke, I and mean, obviously it's not as aggressive, but we can see that KGB has been the only man really mid on the side of TSM to challenge out and to kind of lock down that early control. And I mean, if you're going to be pushing three people long on the CT side, that must invariably mean that mid and B is going to be a lot weaker. So there's three people more or less on long. And Fnatic are kind of setting up for it as well. They're going to be running through the smoke here. No time wasted. The Swedes come into the B bomb side, and this is going to be a tough defense for TSM. Device trying his best, but Cajun goes down. Dupree still inside. And the bomb is actually making its way back catwalk. They're f throwing him for a fake. They're all the way in B <laughs> as they start running back towards the A-bomb side. And this TSM did not see coming. JW still staying alive. He finally drops. And only now Dupree's realizing, wait a minute, there's nobody else here. We've given up the A-bomb side. This is still not so bad. Playing 3v4 retake against what Fnatic have, it should be possible. Although all of Mice is making it hard, taking down Sipnik. So 3v3 bomb taking away. And Carrigan making his way up long. All of Mice are going for a quick peek and a headshot sprays again. It's a triple kill. It's a quad kill. He's looking for the ace. He goes down with just a little bit left there on device. 32 health. And Pronax going to finish it off. And that's how Fnatic win it. A huge push in to be there all the way in. They pull out and go back onto the A-bomb side. <laughs> So JW, they use smokes to give him some cover to delay as long as he possibly can, divide his time, while the enemy team rotates around, and while his team rotates back towards middle, towards catwalk. That was just a stunning play and a stunning read on how Team Solidman are really executing onto the CT side. But Wolfmeister picking up four kills like that, you can't depend on it, but when he goes big, he really does, and that finally ties things back up for Fnatic. Gives him some momentum as TSM are on the save. And because TSM didn't have anyone playing really close middle, they couldn't hear all that rotation back and forth. And if they had, maybe they wouldn't have been able to call out a bit earlier what was going on here. Now, they're back to pistols and no armor at 13-13. This is turning into a scary match. You can see TSM definitely learned quite a bit since they last met just less than a week ago in that best of five. And device again, trying to go for that peak towards tunnel, trying to spot them out, maybe get a, a cheeky kill or two, but he's already been tagged down to 58 health. They haven't done much damage to the side of Fnatic just yet. But I love the way Fnatic are playing this, realizing it's going to be eco out of TSM. Your economy is really vulnerable at this point, so don't lose any guns you don't necessarily need to. Play this one safe, stick together. Pronax is going to be the man by himself over towards Kawak to cause a little bit of a distraction. But it's all in this man here. All in device to Dupree to hold on this B site when the next few comes. Pronax will go down. Good effort there, but it might not matter unless device can stay alive for a long time. And as I say it, he gets a shot to the face and ends up going down to pre some good damage and a kill as well. So at least they're making it expensive for Fnatic, and that's also very important. Another kill, and maybe if they can save that AK, which Pronax dropped up on Catwalk, this could be a decent round. There's the AK picked up. If they could find Olaf Meister and take him out, it'd be huge for TSM here. And there it is, jumping shot from Cajun. Olaf is going to remember that for a while. JW and Flusher are left inside the bomb site. They might actually die with the bomb here. But if they try to close off all the uh, avenues to escape, KGB sitting in tunnels, you have Zidmix over towards middle to stop JW from pushing through. Kerrigan over towards long as well to peek once his teammate has drawn the fire, which Zidmix has ex uh, actually done. But Kerrigan has been able to connect. There we go, finally picks up the one. And Flush should be the last one alive. I'm not sure if he's going to survive this, but they went the round nonetheless. Oh, Cajun, can he not find that kill? He can't. That's actually a bit of a slip up there. That would have been a big blow, but still... Four people died to just pistols, and they were able to save an AK on the TSM side, so a really big victory for them. This could come back to haunt Fnatic. If they lose this round now, TSM pretty bounce up to match point, and Fnatic will have very bad economy, even going to the 30th round. Yep. So a lot rides on this, and quick flash in, but they're not going to follow up behind it. Yeah, it looks like Fnatic going back to more of a standard kind of play with Ulfmeister sitting on the upper part of middle, keeping that man outside long, which is going to be flush, and the rest working towards mid. But they have the bomb down on lower beam, TSM, they still have two men towards long with KGB holding on towards ramp of the A site. And Device and Dupree are going to be inside the B, or inside B. So they've given up middle control completely. They're not going to have this information if the smokes come in. Just one simple smoke at Fnatic will force Cajun B or Zipnix to play towards CT spawn um, to actually spot and not to mention hear out this rotate in towards the B site if it does come. 
And I'm curious if they can set up a good defense here at TSM. If that happens, they do love playing that window, and pretty much everyone knows it. So it looks like it will be the B split coming out. Device jumping up there. He spots one guy coming out of the smoke, and will smoke up himself. Dupree goes down, and Device is soon to follow. 12 health and hiding in that door. No <laughs> chance. Cajun will take him out. Oh, no. Someone didn't get the right information, called in the airstrike a bit too soon, and it's going to be 3-5, and all they have to do is save here. There's no chance at all. I mean, <laughs> that was rough. I mean, that's a smart play. But this goes back to what we were talking about before. When you know like a 3-2 split's coming, or you know that mid-push to B is coming, you can either sit there and watch two different angles, or you can group up and push tunnel together. It would have been really risky for them to do that because they've been up against four people to push in the tunnel, or they could have went out towards middle and then played for the full retake. But, I mean, it's always hindsight 2020, so. If you have a lot of utility and you know that the push is coming with more than, you know, two seconds to prepare for it, you can also try and put up, you know, Molotovs into the door and window and then hope that the terrorist push, push sort of gets desynchronized. So then instead of all pushing window, door right, and right. upper dark all at the same time, you sort of make sure that some of them have to wait for the Molotov and maybe they're not quick enough calling it out. So that, so that you know, the some one sort of angle and the push is still going while the other one is delayed. But it's super hard to do, especially how TSM was set up. I actually... I mean, that, that defense works only if Device gets a really early spot on someone, and they couldn't because they walked through the smoke in middle. Great yeah. play by Fnatic. Well, they're forced everything they can into the Strauss TSM as Device is sitting there with the op in towards middle. We'll be smoked off for now. I think Fnatic can realize how close they are to picking up this victory. 15-13, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, such a good start for TSM. 8-0, and, and now we're at 13-15, so... Could be seeing over time as well. That's always going to be in the cards, but it's going to have to be a big performance here from the Danish team to make it work. Another smoke. Oh, oh no! Oh. JW! That was essentially an AWP haircut. That was uh, clean and precise. A device only takes a little bit of damage in the middle now. 50 seconds left, and Pronax again sneaking in with a similar smoke that they threw last round to see if they can make it work. Smoke goes up. Oh, are they gonna? Yeah, they have no idea that Pronax is in CT spawn. This is huge. He's gonna go for the spray, but not gonna work out. Sibnix will take him out. And Cajun playing inside this A bomb site, looking for a headshot on anybody. Time is running out for Fnatic. They take out Sibnix for Cajun. Oh, he goes down as well. Headshot there onto Cajun B. And now it's a 3v3. 20 seconds left. Where is that bomb plant happening? Dupree gets the one kill there, and now Crimson Flusher are left. And they can't win this round any longer. Bomb has gone down. Crim's last man standing, and he gets dropped by Kerrigan. So 14-15, and TSM staying alive. Uh, as well done by them, too, because the pressure was on. If they lost that round, they would have went into the decider match tomorrow against the victors of Titan and Na'Vi, which will be the game coming up after. But into the final round of regular time here, can TSM pull it into overtime? You can see Fnatic not really much bought up. Not a lot of utility to work with, not to mention two Galils and Device is sitting with the op. TSM are looking confident into this round, but it all comes down to, can they pull this one out? They certainly have the, uh, the odds favoring them right now. Looks like some quick, aggressive catwalk control coming out from Fnatic, and that smoke goes up just as they're pushing out, and Device with an early kill there, taking down Flusher. Another four kills, and we're going to be in overtime, ladies and gentlemen. It's JW with a shot, Cajun showing up. He gets one, Sipnix with a kill as well. It's all on JW and Olaf to close this out and put an end to TSM because who knows what happens in overtime. The bomb is dropped down there as well. They can't actually easily go and pick it up. That's a disaster for Fnatic. It must have dropped off the ledge and into CT spawn. They put up a smoke and they will pick it up. Can they boost it? That's a nice throw. And JW goes aggressive and that might have been a step too much. And now it's all on Olaf and he's gonna get a chance to prove what he's really made of here. In a 1v3, only just gone down. The bomb is looking for the headshot here. Spraying down, not gonna connect with anybody yet. And he's got no more grenades left. They've got two Molotovs and a smoke. He kills one, and that's going to be the end. Sibnix comes up, and we're going to be at overtime. What a match this is turning into. That's got to hurt for Fnatic, too, because if KGB and Zimnix didn't pick up those two kills, the bomb would not have dropped. That would have been a plant, and that should have been Fnatic picking up the victory. But well done by them to realize the bomb was down onto the boxes. They could completely control that and at least prevent the man escaping if he does yeah. rescue the bomb nonetheless. So JW trying to make something happen out of nothing. But Anders, we're going to overtime between these two teams, and... It wasn't necessarily the closest of games considering how it started off. That was TSM taking an eight round straight lead, 8-0. And then we had to take five straight thereafter to end off 6-9 at the end of the first half. 
Scary, scary uh, turn of events here. I feel like for both teams, Fnatic probably felt like they, they almost had it. They almost managed to break them. And if TSM hadn't managed to save those three rifles in the previous round, I mean, they would have gone into uh, the later stages with almost nothing. Yeah. But uh, they just managed to make it through. And yeah, over time, it's going to be the first team to reach 19 rounds we're looking for here. It's, uh, it's MR3 over time. Yeah, and we have to think about how exactly the teams want to go about this. Like you're saying, I think it's 10K start money, yeah. uh, MR3. So you have to wonder, if you invest into the double up setup, which is something that saved Fnatic on the CT side when they finally got that rolling and gave themselves five rounds, if you lose that round that you invest in the double up setup, you're pretty screwed money-wise coming into the next few rounds. So yeah. we've seen some teams already start to do the whole buy normally in the first round, and if you win that round, go double up setup because you can afford it into the third round as well. So it's really tricky. A lot of mind games, exactly how you want to hit this. But uh, Fnatic, they've been doing, I want to say it's fairly well on the T side. Uh, TSM have finally been able to respond decently well in these rounds. But I want to see how TSM are going to change things up maybe into this. Or maybe Fnatic, are they going to go back to being very aggressive and catching TSM off guard? Well, it's going to be so much more difficult for Fnatic to be aggressive because they're going to have all the utility on TSM side. They've got HE grenades and Molotovs. They do have the double up setup as well. Device running through the smoke and he goes down. JW was there. Even as Crims was running into suicide, it could have been a refrag there from Device, but it just doesn't happen. So not the best start. One of the ops already gone. I know if my saw that smoke, unfortunately, didn't go exactly where he wanted. It got blocked off by that Molotov, so he's forced to give up that position. In the meantime, the rest of the team with this man advantage, going to be working up towards Catwalk. And they have the utility to make it, uh, to make it happen. KGB is sitting back on site with the AWP. He's not sitting towards that car position, which we haven't seen, I think, used at all in this entire game so far with an op just kind of tucked away in that position. But either way, they're going to try to maintain control of this, and it comes down to Kerrigan. If they do hit the A side, if he can lock down that control of Long, but... It's coming towards B, and Dupree and Zitmix are already here waiting. Yeah, important kill on Pronax there as well from Cajun. Hopefully they can realize soon that no one else is there. They're already sort of moving towards CT spawn. This setup is very interesting. Dupree playing by the car, and another guy by the doorway, and they need to get these opening frags. If one goes down, then the other one has got no chance. They're going to get essentially sandwiched in. There's Dupree dropping, and now Zitmix coming back into it. He's also getting shot in the back. Oh, it was about to get shot. Actually, they run back out of middle. I was surprised. That would have been an instant kill on Sipnix if they'd kept pushing. So a little bit surprised that they didn't do that. Sipnix now goes down anyway, pushing in alone. And don't ask me why. They surely should have waited for everyone to have been there. Now look at this, Jason. Olaf, Crims, and Flusher, each of them so low on health and still staying alive. Yeah, just one nade could completely change the pace of this round. But it looks like that will be TSM trying to save up here. And we've, it's not the first time we've seen like kind of questionable play of that. I think we've seen Crims do it before earlier as well, just kind of rush into the site. But I think it's also maybe a little bit of a mind game. It's if you're on the T side and you got on the site, you're like, all right, well, there's no way they're going to rush through that smoke because they're going to regroup. They're going to want to regroup at least to hit the site yeah. on a retake. And maybe that's the hope he was going for. Maybe catch him off guard. He didn't have that much help anyways to work with. So maybe get a cheeky kill or two to take away a position and get the team information. It could have been a nice opportunity. It could have been something like that. I. I feel like the setup on the B-bomb site for TSM is very weak. The way that they hold a door and then up a dark, it's, they really are risking it all on the idea that each person can get at least one kill and that, or, or stay alive long enough, because otherwise Fnatic will time the push to the sandwich then. It's happened a couple of times already, and it seems like Fnatic know it as well. Wouldn't be surprised if they're going to try and hit B again with it. Leg shot on Carrigan. Flusher actually got that kill. And now it's Fnatic running a double up instead. Well, so is TSM. Yeah, so a lot invested in both teams into this round, but with Kerrigan already down on a sliver of health, it's going to be a little bit rough for him. And again, Fnatic, they slowed down the pace quite a bit. Device able to pick up the kill in mid onto JW, so it does limit what Fnatic can potentially do on towards Catwalk. Not to mention, TSM have all three people over towards that long area. But you can see, finally, this is what I want to see, as you're mentioning, TSM are a little bit weak on the B side in terms of their hold. I wanted to see someone on back plat there, just to lock down tunnels with an AWP or an M4, just to kind of have that nice cover. So even if your teammate dies, you can at least get a little bit of a better angle and potentially pick up another kill before you go down. And they've finally been able to do that with Dupree still watching towards middle. But Fnatic, with still 50 seconds to go, a lot of time in the world, they can choose to go where they want. I mean, if you're playing back plat and one guy in window, at least the guy in window can throw a smoke into doorway, and then you're sort of covering all the yeah. entrances. You've got that going on, but it's still you still need everyone to stay alive. You can't have anyone dying, but it's a better setup, you're right, than, than what they've been running previously. They're still trying it. Looks like it's going to be a push towards the A-bomb side with Pronex running into CT spawn and Cajun. He didn't see it coming. Flush are going to get the kill. Carrigan now playing in Goose, and they're coming from two angles. Device down in pit helps him out. No bomb plant this time around. Carrigan sets up for the pop flash, but they're too quick. 
quick, and Flusher will take him out. Still a man advantage for TSM and around that they need. They can't allow Fnatic to get too much here. Device, no scope jump, not going to hit once. Is he going to go for it again? Device, no. Device, yes, he gets the <laughs> shot, and it's going to be down to Flusher. Late shot from Device, and Flusher goes down. What an adventure. Device taking us on here. Triple kill, and the, def and the defuse as well. That was... One no scope, one no scope leg shot. The, the chance of hitting a no scope like that is already difficult, but to hit two with the other one being the leg, that's that's phenomenal. I mean, that's just such an amazing play out of him getting very lucky in that. And they also have the retake potential with Zimix towards long, but wow, what a play. They forced Fred to go for the plant ASAP, and they tied things up at 16 yet again. They were able to save the double options into, into this <laughs> round. And Fnatic sitting on three, not the quite four that we saw at the major, but that's well, still going to be a lot of damage if they can catch him crossing. They might as well do this. This is the last round of the first half of the overtime. They are not going to save any of this money anyway going into the CT side. And there's Crims taking out Dupree through the door. He's going to be gone. So a great start and a good investment for Fnatic. And TSM didn't commit anyone towards the B site till just now when Device has been able to rotate in. You have KGB rotating from the A site to help out, but Device with the off, it's going to be damn hard to stop anyone from coming through if you're going to sit that tucked in close to the smoke. But KGB is finally able to respawn. I believe that was actually over towards middle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, important kill there. Getting it back in control. 4v4 until Device goes down. He's playing on the plateau and he drops to JW. And now it's basically free entrance into B here. Not a lot that they could do. They need to wait for backup. Sipnix is going to try and push three. Will they flash him through this time? He sprays one, almost a second one. And the bomb is dropped. He doesn't have the right angle for the second kill. And Cajun is up in the window there. The bomb is going to go down this time. Fnatic, they will be holding it in. 3v3, retake is on. Flusher with a good flick there to drop Carrigan. And now they've got the advantage. Fnatic, they could be at 17 rounds in just a couple of seconds here. All of Mice are still on. The box just waiting, SJW running, Sipnix over, and that's an easy kill for Olof. And there it is, 17-16 for the first half of the overtime. Fnatic with a slight victory, but not a huge one. Yeah, not huge, but it's a lead nonetheless going into the second half, where their CT side actually was a little bit weak, at least from what we saw. But then again, they're going to go have the double up set up right off the get-go, which is where they really did well, pick up those five rounds straight after losing eight straight. But credit to JW to really open up on the site. I mean, in terms of kills, like JW's been relatively quiet for the majority of this. I was looking back at about, what, the 26th round. He was at 11 kills. And like the next closest highest to him was, I think, 20. Mm, He's had yeah. a relatively quiet game. He's had some astonishing play, like with the push out towards long to the Molotov, but just been, you know, a little bit quiet. As Creams as well, who's been such a huge stat leader uh, going into uh, ESO1 Cologne. He's at 13 and 25 so far. Yeah, he's a bit towards the bottom of the scoreboard, but then, you know, Flusher and Olofmeister at 27 I mean, kills yeah, each. Yeah, yeah. They are hogging a lot of those kills. Exactly. I mean, maybe there's not much left We can't over. look at it as him underperforming. It's just everyone else doing really well. I mean, that's just kind of the perfect example of what Fnatic is. Yeah, by the time Krim shows up, there's nothing left. You know, it's, they've already taken care of business. <laughs> On the other team, it's actually Cajun top fragging and Dupree and Jason. You sort of intro this whole matchup saying that uh, the last time they played at Frankbad in Stockholm there, Cajun wasn't really showing up too much yep. uh, this time around. He definitely is. And I think Fnatic, they, they know this. They know that Cajun has a thing for playing against them. They've said as much. We're going to go into the second half of the overtime here. Two rounds away is Fnatic. Three rounds away is TSM. It's always a chance for double overtimes. Let's see how it plays out. Fnatic with the double up set up immediately. Oh, they're going to get a tag on the cross, though, with the help of that grenade. Fnatic went for the quick push towards Catwalk as well. Going for the boost in towards Lord B. Where Dupree and KGB will be waiting. JW falls off his partner. And that could have been a kill that solidified a round for them. Doing a good start. Olof is there, though. He won't miss the shot. And Device will go down. That's the AWP on the terrorist side being removed. So two chances there. One with the aggressive boost and one just Olof Meister challenging middle. A bit scary for TSM. Let's see how they plan on bringing it back. Pronax is here, and there's one thing I love about Pronax, it's his flashbang timing. I think it's most obvious when he plays Mirage on the B-bomb side, but he's got it on all maps. He's very good at timing those pop flashes. It's not just Pronax, JW's there as well, but Kerrigan with a peek in towards middle does get a kill on off my switch, opens up the B-side. Krim is going to be all alone. He's going to have to choose, push in a tunnel, or wait for the bend to come in through door. Well, he's not going to get any chance. They time it perfectly. He wants to take a peek, gets taken down from doorway, and now it's a 4v3 here. Flusher looking to get in, but that Molotov is going to buy so much time, and they even have another three Molotovs. This should be absolutely unwinnable for Fnatic, and I think they're realizing there's nothing they could do. That many Molotovs, that's something you've got to give TSM credit for, and something I think maybe a bunch of teams actually don't value highly enough is saving the Molotovs for 
the, the push plant situation. I think more teams should do that. Yeah, typically teams use it to clear out angles, right? Not necessarily yeah. use it to hold on to a certain sp uh, position. And it probably depends on what map you're playing. We saw earlier in the day how Virtus Pro did it on cash, how incredibly good they were at clearing out all the angles with Molotovs. And then it's obviously worth it. But some maps, maybe Dust2 is one of them, it could be kind of cool to save them. And, uh, I think Dust2 is also one of like the maps that it's easier for teams to retake, except maybe the B side. That one's going to be the most difficult, obviously, yeah. between the two. But teams are so used to retaking on the A side. Just like a Mirage towards A, teams are so used to retaking uh, it's definitely uh, definitely valuable to save the Molotovs into it later on into the round. But here we go, 17-17 all tied up, and Carrier's going for the quick peek towards Long. Yeah, he's going to oh, not get the shot, made. and he runs into it. This is the problem. Even if he gets that kill, there's a chance he'll go down. I mean, this time around, he would have survived on 18 health, but it is such a big risk, and Carrigan probably should have known that. Didn't get the shot off, so Fnatic off to a slightly better start than TSM anyway. And you can tell Fnatic are setting up for... They're expecting that this might be a B-split, because they already got a guy in CT spawn waiting. But look at Device pushing in, taking JW. There's a second guy that oh! hits the shot on Pronax what? too. And that's going to open up that A-bomb side Device turning on. God mode at the moment. It's going to be more than a minute left here as TSM is making their way up to the A-bomb side Device. Jumping down and Fnatic already wondering, should we go? Or should we save and essentially fight for double OT? That's what they're doing. Wow, what a shot there. That was amazing out of device to pick up the first. And the thing is, you looked at how he approached the second kill. He didn't expect him to be there. He did not know JW was going to be in that position. And he was able to realign, get the shot off. Gage will get a kill there to get a gun out of Olofmeister's hands. But TSM, they've shown up to play. They are now so close to pick up the victory and advancing through to the semifinals. And they want these guns away. TSM out hunting, setting up for a pop flash there. The Cajun sort of exposing himself, and I don't know what happened to Olaf in the middle. He was falling asleep for a moment then, it seems. Another kill coming in under pre this doesn't matter. TSM, don't worry about giving up the trifles. They just want to take the last away here, and they're going to be successful on Flusher. That would have been transformed into either a drop for a teammate or a lot of grenades for Flusher. So um, they get to take a little bit away there, and that's good news. You can see Famas on Pronax, and no grenades on JW, so that economic damage Definitely important. It's match and map point, ladies and gentlemen, in overtime in favor of TSM. And you can see TSM, they had the money to go for like the quad up in towards middle, and yet they wanted to get people out towards long as quick as they could, and they catch Olaf Meister, push, boost it up, catwalk pushing out middle. Yeah, they got the better spawn for it, and they decided to go for it. Flusher over peaking the angle, but they still win it. That's a huge risk. Now, Pronax is caught in a bad position, and he's going to get taken out. So is Flusher two kills away from TSM, finally getting a bit of revenge here against the Swedish champions. It's JW and Crims left, and you should never underestimate these two players. JW moving in on Catwalk, gonna miss the shot, and still alive somehow. He took no damage, but he's sandwiched in, he goes down, and now it's all on Crims, who hasn't had the best game yet, but now his team need him, and he's gonna be shot in the back, and here it is, TSM taking down Fnatic on Dust2 here, the ESL ESCA Dubai Invitational. Oh, that was not easily done by them as well. They had to fight tooth and nail for that. But when it came to overtime, picking up all those rounds on the T side, definitely proving and reiterating to the points that we made earlier on of them being such a strong T-sided team. Oof. I mean, once you go into overtime and it's that close, you there are so many rounds you could pick up and look at and think, oh, if only that had played out a tiny bit differently, if only there had been some changes there. I like, I like to see TSM not sort of surrendering and just continuing to fight like this. But I do really want to see that the CT side B setup change. I feel like it's there are too many issues with it at the moment. Um, and this, as I think Moses was pointing out during the analyst panel, this might also be one of Fnatic's weakest maps. So you've got to think about that too. I, I definitely agree with you on the, the whole B thing with, with TSM. I would love to see like someone in middle. You think about how Cloud9 hold, they have two people towards the B side. Then yeah. they have Freakazoid typically in CT spawn, exactly. listening for the rotates or there to help you know, stop and going for that push in towards uh, B doors. But nonetheless, they still picked up the victory against the best team in the world. And now they move through into the semifinals tomorrow. Yeah, really well played, obviously. And uh, I mean, de Device also just going completely mad in the end. The, the double jump shot to get one kill, one leg shot. And then uh, obviously the, the double kill on Catwalk at the end there, completely crazy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go onto the stage with an interview and Sean Charles, take it away. Thank you so much, guys. Well done. And of course, well done to you, Dupree. How are you feeling, sir? Oh, super great. It was great to get a, a little kind of a wrench from the last weekends of uh, Fright Bite show off. So it was definitely good to actually and do it at this tournament is even better. So, yeah. Now, obviously, Fnatic, big team. Everybody, you know, has them arguably a bit on a pedestal. Does that play into your mind when you're going here? Or is it just business as usual? 
Well, obviously it's business, business as usual. Um, we like to play Fnatic. Um, I think our, our play style is pretty good fitting against them. Um, but they are without a doubt the best team in the world. So it's always great to beat them because like it, it gives you confidence and stuff like it. So it's, it's always great. It's, yeah. Now, was there anything in particular you say, hey, that, that really worked for us, that strat worked, that, that approach worked? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but was there anything you say I'd, I'd put it down to that? Well, we came after a really good start. Uh, I think that helped us a lot. We were up 8-0 before we actually started losing rounds. Um, people communicated really well. People hit their shots. Um, and then just they, they figured out what to do against us in, in, in the end. And we lost some rounds that we should definitely have lost. I think it was like a 3 and one and, and we also lost like some other stupid rounds because of miscommunication. But that's what happens. I mean, like they also lost an eco round, which they probably did not uh, count on either. So, But overall, I'm just happy that we won. Now, you've had some fantastic support here in Dubai. How does that feel to come here, have that support, you know, experience this just quickly? Oh, it, it's super great. Like, I, I, I didn't even expect that many people to show up because, I mean, I, I have no idea how big it is down here. Um, but it's just great that people have actually stayed, even despite all the, the delays we've had and the vague errors we had as well. So I'm just happy that everyone got here. And obviously, we have a, we have a few Danish supporters out there as well. So, uh, and a big shout out to them as well, obviously. Well, we're so happy that you're here. We're so happy that you're playing through. So thank you again. And of course, the guys who are going to break that down are led by the man himself, the machine. I never really thought about adding the to the start of my name, but I think I might start. Hello, I'm the machine. I think, I don't know. It has a good ring to it. Yeah, it sounds quite yeah. self-righteous, but I'll, I'll, I'll consider it. Uh, either way, I am joined by Moses and Vendetta to break that one down. And what a game it was. I mean, we said before, will this go to 30 rounds? It went even more so, which is always great to see. Um, starting with you then, Halvor. General outlook on that one. Uh, just a crazy back and forth game. And I think Dupree kind of has summed it up nicely. Could have easily gone in both teams' favors. They lost a couple yeah. of rounds that they definitely should have shouldn't have lost, especially the flush of one on three. And then you have obviously the, the eco round that Fnatic loses at, I think, 12 to 11 in favor of them. Yeah, that was pretty crushing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about it during the match too. It's, uh, it's not many, I mean, when you go up 8-0 in the first half and then you end the half 9-6, like that's, you feel terrible about that. Oh, that's, can, almost, yeah. that's almost like you actually lost the half. That's gotta be uh, just crushing to deal with. And there's not many teams at this level outside of Fnatic who can make a comeback like that when they're down 8-0 to just, you know, stick with it. It's very difficult to do. And on the other side, it's very difficult for a team like TSN, like not many teams when you, when you squander that kind of a lead are able to maintain it, come into overtime, and then win it in overtime. So very impressive play from both teams, really. I mean, we expected as much, two best teams in the yeah. world. Yeah, and overcoming that obstacle. I feel like time and time again, you see a team get a lead, and to, to have that taken away from them, usually that's the sign of a very poor second half. I think that's something that is, you've made a very good point there, that if, if you had to list two teams that have the mental fortitude to win from a, right. like a kind of mess up like that, Probably those two would come spring straight to mind. Um, how, how much do you think mental fortitude plays a part in this? Because I think, you know, you look at Fnatic, they no, at no point look like a team that are, are out of the running. Like, it doesn't matter what number, they, are, they have the potential to come back. Right. Well, especially with the delays. Especially yeah. with yeah. the delay. I mean, to, to keep with it mentally through that and then into overtime, that was a long, long map. So, I mean, that, that was the big thing is that they all, I mean, they, they were kept playing good um, in those kind of situations as well. Device really stepped up. You want your star player, you know, didn't, you know, didn't have any like crazy like four kills or aces, but some crucial frags at the beginning of rounds and the middle portions of rounds that, that really timely kills uh, that bailed them out. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I, I guess that goes for, for both teams as well. I think Dupree as well had a really good game. Uh, so, you know, definitely want to highlight him as well. But, it, you know, with experience, you get that kind of mental fortitude that you need mm. to to stick it through the games like these, and both of these teams have a ton of it. And I, I really think that's why we're, we are, we're able to see such a good game come out of it, even though you have your, you know, technical issues and whatnot. Mm. They're both able to perform at a really high level. A great game to watch as oh, well. Absolutely. So the uh, winners there, TSM, are going to go on to play. Well, sit there, but besides VP in that semi-final slot. And we have, of course, Titan Navi, which is going to be coming up next. That's going to be another great one. I was talking to Shocks just beforehand, and he's sitting there feeling that Titan Navi are always a tough game for them. So really looking forward to seeing how that unfolds. Any closing thoughts, though, on the Fnatic TSM game? Is that a sign of something we may be seeing a little later in the tournament, would you say, Moses? Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, I do just want to say that it, it took us a long time to get there, but I was right. Yeah, I do. Uh... <laughs> 
So is, are, you, just are, you, are you sitting at 100% for yeah. now? I mean, yeah. that's your first call, so yep. technically 100% <laughs> success rate on, on, yeah. the, uh, on the predictions. We're going to keep it going all week. Yeah, it's been rough for me so far. I'll make you call the next one correct, OK? We'll make sure you get that one right. Just go be like, he's told me that in the back, you know, backstage area. Yeah. Like, preferably we'll after the game is over. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got a lot to talk about later on, of course, regarding Titan versus Navi, teams that I'm really excited to see play. What form will Titan be in, and will Navi be able to kind of prove their worth here in Dubai? We'll find out straight after this.